Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came and giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we gain no value to hate it. they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, uh-huh. today, episode 380. We made it to 380, folks. Uh-huh. And we got we got some crazy stories going on. One of the most important things that we want to show our commitment to is we saw a story uh, a couple days ago about PETA not being happy with Easter eggs because Easter's coming up and they're, they're suggesting we change them. So we wanted to make sure we followed the guidelines and we actually have the most proper Easter eggs here with us that I'll show you later on because I think we have to... Uh, follow the guidance accordingly and become good citizens, folks. So just kind of stick around because, you know, we 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 wanna we wanna set that great example for everybody. Anyways, aside from that, a lot of weird things going on. Don Lemon apparently did an interview with Elon Musk, and Elon Musk was furious. It ended up not looking well, but uh, Don did a CNN tour. He was back on CNN talking about his experience, what it was like. So we'll talk about that. We got a couple clips for you as well to react to. Aside from that, special counsel. Uh, ex-special counsel Robert Hur on Capitol Hill for bombshell testimony. Apparently, President Biden forgot the year of son's uh, bow death, as well as Trump's election and special counsel. There's a bunch of other things that we'll talk about with there. RFK Jr. announces he feels the best VP candidate would be a Super Bowl champion quarterback. Stud of a guy, Aaron Rodgers. It's a good pick, but we'll see what's going to happen there. By the way, he gave a very interesting data on an interview yesterday with Fox Business or Fox News. He said, you know, the biggest voter base right now is the independent, 43%. He says, you know, Republicans and Democrats are only at 27%. This is the highest it's ever been. Oh, man. Where independents are officially 43% of America trying to really make up their minds who they want to vote for. So he has no interest in being a VP. New polls came out from Bloomberg. When you see the, this poll with the six different areas that's really it's going to come down to. The battleground. The battleground. When you see the plus minus on who has the lead, very, very interesting to say the least. House passes bill that could see TikTok banned in the U.S. We have the breakdown of all the people that want to buy TikTok. And uh, the, the, the lead buyer is somebody that nobody is expecting, but the people who have money, who have influence know that if this guy really wanted to do it he could do it and apparently he's interested in doing it and it's not musk but it's somebody that's a very close friend of musk and we'll talk about that united airlines reports fifth incident in over a week as u.s bound flight returns to australia uh four billion dollars is wiped off of boeing's value overnight after whistleblower's death i wonder why what would cause that to happen you know, is it an accident? Was it intentional? Who knows? We'll see what's going to take place. The bathrooms place are too small. People are complaining about the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, I saw they that. They don't want to fly. That. Boeing's whistleblower lawyer questions whether he committed suicide. Calls for a thorough probe. No one can believe it. This is a New York Post story. Majority of Americans are frustrated by excessive tipping. Gone too far. By the way, for a guy who loves to tip, I agree with the story, and I'll tell you why. Jamie Dimon says the Fed should hold off on rate cuts as its credibility is a little bit at stake. Interesting. Trump asked Elon Musk if he wanted to buy Truth Social. YouTube is thriving in the cable replacement space as a one-stop shop for consumers, yet the great YouTube exodus is coming, leaving AI junk and Mr. Beast to reign supreme. Putin warns against Russia, against uh, again, that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons of sovereignty is threatened, and congressman evacuates 10 Americans from crime-ravaged Haiti, slams Biden for pattern of abandonment. Anyways, lots of stories to get into, and as well as a Tim Pool tweet that uh, I'll react to here shortly. Mm. Uh, Tim Pool, we announced yesterday that uh, one of the talent partners we brought on board is Chris Cuomo, and we're excited about it, and Temple wasn't too happy about it. The markets reacted. My phone blew up with a lot of different messages yesterday. A lot of people connecting and asking questions about whether this was the right move or not. We'll react to that as well. However, 
Uh, I did say on the last podcast on Tuesday that today I will be given four UFC fight tickets simply because of a poll we did where 91% of people that almost voted, 10,000 people that voted, 91% had never been to a UFC fight before. And I said anybody that does a purchase from vtmerch.com, you do an order of $50 or more per $50, you'll get another name in the raffle. We're going to announce that today. We're leaving that open till 10 o'clock. A couple things just so everybody knows. These pink hats sold out in no time that we had for some of you guys that say, can we get some lady products and some pink stuff? Gone. No problem. Now, Gone. listen, I wore this myself a couple days ago. I, I love was sporting it. Dennis, and I love the color. We got a couple of these, whether it's the, the, the one Kobe. dedicated to Kobe, the purple and gold, or it's the police department, the navy blue, or the PBD podcast shirt, or St. Patrick Future Looks Bright, green shirts that are here. All I can say is for those that want to be involved in the raffle for the UFC tickets, you got an hour till 10 o'clock, which means you got 46 minutes. Go to vtmerch.com, place your order, and those who do, $50 or high, your name will be in the raffle. And that's UFC Las Vegas. UFC Las Vegas, that's coming up here soon. Deal. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a big card. It's an exciting card. UFC Anyways, 300. Oh. UFC 300, absolutely. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Don Lemon says Elon Musk canceled his deal after X uh, uh, w- uh, with X after tense interview this is a cnn story and we got a couple clips that we want to show you but let me first read the story to you and then we go to the clips don lemon said wednesday that his partnership with elon musk uh went down the flames hours after the former cnn anchor conducted an interview last week with the erratic billionaire for the debut episode of his new independent web-based show elon publicly encouraged me to join x with a new show saying i would have his full support Lemon said in a statement, adding that he took Musk at his word that he was interested in working directly with diverse voices. In an interview with CNN's Aaron Burnett on Wednesday, Lemon spoke about his exchange with Musk and shared video excerpts from the 90-minute sit-down in which Lemon asked Musk questions on an array of topics. Lemon said he pressed Musk about the rise in hate speech on X since Billionaire took over the social media platform, asking him if he believed that he and the company had a responsibility to mar- moderate hateful content. Rob, do you have any of the clips here that we can show? So uh, how many of you guys saw this interview with CNN that he did yesterday? Who watched the entire thing? Did you guys watch the entire thing? I did no, not watch I it. I watched the whole thing. It's actually very interesting. Mm. P- play, play. Uh, uh, well, that's the promo, right? He's kind of talking about being canceled. Do you, have a, uh, do you have another one outside of that? So this is him on CNN, kind of giving a glimpse of what the conversation was. Like, go ahead and play this clip, Rob. That one that you got right there. Uh, this is just real quick. This is an excerpt from the interview where he talks about interviewing Donald or speaking with Donald Trump. He's Go asking ahead, play the clip. Let's see some of the stuff that they spoke. You about. recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by. That's it. What did you discuss? I, I don't. Um, let's just say uh, he did most of the talking. <laughs> did he ask you for money? He didn't. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his legal bills? I'm not. I'm not paying paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. Did he ask you for a donation? No. Are you leaning towards anyone? No. You're not leaning towards anyone because you've been. Very- well, let me say I'm leaning leaning away from Biden. You're leaning away <laughs> from Biden. Well said. From Biden, he said. Yeah, he said I'm leaning, leaning away, away from, from somebody, oh. meaning like you know, gotcha. he definitely does. Did want he to- say Biden? He didn't send Biden. Okay. He said from someone. Go ahead and play this other clip, and then we'll react to it. Go no, ahead. I'm more like a deposition interview. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Bop, 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 Go ahead. Bop. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it relates I to Democrats? I don't have to answer these questions. The Great Replacement Theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that... Look, I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform, and you asked for it. Uh, otherwise, I would not do interview, this interview. So you don't think? That you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble, or you wouldn't be criticized what for else? these things? I'm or criticized that constantly. Was... I could care less. Hmm. Illuminating in so many ways. All right, I have two. I have two things I want to ask you about that, Don. First, <clears throat> the Great Replacement Theory. Right. You can as pause you bring it right it up. there. You can pause it right there. So, Look, Tom, reaction to this interview. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, it, it kind of disappoints me. Don Lemon is a professional. It didn't seem like an interview where you want to get people talking and you want to dive into issues. It really felt like a deposition. Where were you on the night of the 5th? Were you drinking? There's a receipt that says you were drinking. My gosh, it was like, bing, bing, bing. 
And finally, Elon Musk says what we all would expect. Hang on, dude. You asked to have this conversation because you're on X. I'm not doing interviews like this. I'm, I'm getting constantly criticized. And so I was kind of disappointed in Don Lemon's angle. And also, Don Lemon, if you're going to be an investigative reporter, dude, you got to understand, you asked him a direct question about FCC 230, and every one of the social medias don't want to be called a publisher under FCC 230. This is a major issue. Don't you have a responsibility to moderate hate speech? Defining what hate speech speech is and isn't and moderating it and have a bunch of censorship or canceling or back and forth puts you exactly where uh, people like X, Facebook, Insta don't want to be is declared to be moderators under FCC 230. I, I was kind of hoping we would see the Don Lemon that had a very pragmatic viewpoint several years ago. We saw him talking about the African-American community, very positive messages of how to move up. I was kind of hoping after a little bit of a break that maybe that Don Lemon would come back without a liberal producer in his ear, but I didn't see it here. I saw a guy almost like with an axe to grind. Yeah, and, and by the way, so on Twitter, uh, uh, Rob, if you can pull this up. So this is what uh, uh, X Business said. X is a platform that champions free speech, and we're proud to provide an open environment for diverse voices and perspective. The Don Lemon Show is welcome to publish its content without censorship, as we believe in providing a platform for creators to scale for their, uh, their work and connect with new communities. However, we reserve the right to make decisions about our business partnership and careful consideration. X decided not to enter into a commercial partnership with the show. However, the, the challenge with this whole thing is that, that Don Lemon is saying, if you go to the other tweet, he's saying that Elon said on May 10th, 2023, which is about a year ago, have you considered doing your show on this platform? Maybe worth a try. Audience is much bigger. And he was kind of That's a business talking, man, though, right? Of course because he is. Want, yeah, totally fine. Balls. But what, what are your thoughts about this? <laughs> well, for, I, 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 when I saw that CNN Chiron, I was like, wait, wait. I thought it was a joke. Like, didn't they, they just paid him $25 million yeah. not to work with them anymore. <clears throat> Then it wasn't a back. settlement, by the way. Remember, that was just paying, that out, was his paying out his contract. Yeah. He didn't get any extra pennies. But they let him. But they fired him, correct? That's right. And so then they paid now, the contract they signed out. Paid the contract. Now you bring him back to talk to him. It's kind of like a shit show. It's just this is one of the reasons that attitude, that arrogance, that that because the comments he made about women, it was about the older women in their prime. That's what got him fired. It's just unattractive just as a person. I think the case got dropped. But you know what type of – he was accused in 2018. This type of guy that Don Lemon is <clears> – <throat> Do you remember this, Tom? You get emotional. Uh, I'm very emotional, oh, Pat. This is well, no, no. Right, it got dropped. But he was at a he was at a bar, and multiple people said that they saw and heard this. He put his hand down. This is Don Lemon. This is classy Don Lemon. Allegedly, put his hand down his crotch, rubbed it on the waiter's face, and said, "Rubbed <clears throat> his hand on the waiter's face." Well, rubbed his hand on the waiter's yeah. face and sent some really choice words. People heard Oof. it, but apparently. Somebody must have gone and talked to this waiter because the waiter, you know, the waiter said, hmm. uh, I, after I took a deep dive into my memory, oh, let me let me say this right, ready for this? He goes, I took a deep dive into my memory and I don't really recall it anymore. You know what that sounds like? Somebody went and paid him to shut the hell up. But just just that arrogance and that attitude of Don Lemon, I get like I get why Elon Musk wouldn't want to work work with him with partner uh, up. You can still be on the platform, right, Pat? Of course. He can still do his thing, of course. but you're not going to be getting paid for it. But Elon uh, did put that tweet out saying, hey, I welcome a lot of people. Come. I'm not going to pay you. Yeah. I'm sure uh, Don Lemon was okay with that deep dive by that guy right there. <laughs> uh, look, this is what you would call two completely divergent stars, divergent careers intersecting at once. Elon Musk is... Number one or number two richest man in the world, depending on the day, depending on the stock price of Tesla. And you have Don, Don Lemon, who is a fading star, fading newsman, who's just trying to get a name for himself. Like if you saw the uh, I didn't see any of the interview, but we did have that clip um, in our group chat of Don Lemon sort of promoting it. And he was on uh, he was just like on the street doing yeah, his thing. And yeah. It was the equivalent of like. Literally, like, hey, girl, you have no idea what Elon told me. Like, yeah, that's yeah. basically what it was. You saw yeah, that, right? Yeah. But on one hand, you have Elon Musk, who is literally being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize yep. for his contributions to what? Wait for it. Free speech. There it is. And also his contributions to what they call knowledge of Earth and space. Everything he's doing with SpaceX right now. Great. Point. So he's he's, you know. Lift off for Elon Musk, especially over the since COVID when he became the richest man in the world. And Don Lemon since COVID has been, you know, going nowhere fast. So, you know, you have Don Lemon trying to make a name for himself. You know, isn't it ironic that all these legacy media people, 
Don Lemon, now going on to X, Tucker Carlson, the Tucker Carlson was. Network, you know, biggest star on Fox, now on X, Megan Kelly, where you've done content with PBD, she's on YouTube, Chris Cuomo, come and hanging here. out with us, total stud of a guy, you know, and, uh, you know, good to see somebody else maybe getting some of the <laughs> hate comments out there, shout out to you, Chris Cuomo, <laughs> but at the end of the day, why, why I appreciate Elon Musk, he has said that he's a free speech absolutist, and I'm in that camp. And as the Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis said 100 years ago, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So that's what X is. People can say what the hell they want to say. Yep. So, Rob, can you pull up what I just sent you here? Here's the comments that uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 Elon Musk made about the interview. He says, Lemon is welcome to monetize on this platform just like everybody else. What we aren't going to do is business, uh, guarantee minimum payments to him as he was demanding, which would be going beyond everyone else. Unfortunately, all Lemon wants to do is rehash the dying CNN model, right. mm -hmm. but on social media, which will do even worse here than it did on cable TV. By the way, <laughs> he also, on one of the recent posts, most recent thing he commented on, which was like an hour ago, uh, Ian Miles Chong posted something 12 hours ago, and uh, Musk responded six hours ago saying Zucker wrote the questions. Jeff Zucker wrote the questions. Are you serious? From, he's saying this. Oh, okay, Obviously, that's what, that's what Elon Musk is talking about. But let me, let me, <clears throat> let me kind of go through this here on how this thing works. So, you know, yesterday I had a second quest conversation with uh, 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 Ryan Garcia. We had, a, we had an extensive mm. conversation together. And I, everybody at this point knows I want to see this guy make better decisions, okay? And I'm not going to talk about the details of the uh, conversation because I gave him feedback and I sold him a vision and a painting a picture of what this could look like if we stay focused. And he was excited about it and he even commented on it yesterday in one of the ESPN interviews. But I, I, I told him something that I said he has to be very aware of. I said, listen, there, sometimes in life, the, the relationships that you want to build, you have to ask yourself, what do I want from this relationship? I've dated girls where the relationship was like, I have no idea for us to be, no desire for us to be an item. I have no desire for us to hang out. We're not going to hold hands in public. We're not going to weddings together. We're not going to events together. But oh my gosh, we have a lot of fun together. And that's it. Are you good with that? I am. Cool. That's the expectation it is. Okay. Here's what we're doing with this business relationship. I'm really only hiring you for 18 months because I need you to clean up technology, da 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 You good? Awesome, great. Hey, we're only doing this with this. Hey, I'm only going 20 years. Hey, I'm going till the day I die, right? Everything is about managing expectations up front, and you have to ask yourself what kind of a relationship you want with this person. Very simple. So the relationship that Don is wanting to have with Musk, it starts off with, hey, would love to be on the great. Then you... After Musk tries to give you a contract, you do an interview to do a gotcha interview. Yeah. There's a difference between a gotcha interview to make your CNN friends happy and be like, oh, you see what I told them? I yeah. asked them. I asked them. Yeah. Did you see that? Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. I asked them versus, your questions, Jeff. Versus your loyalty to freedom of speech. Your loyalty to freedom of speech is totally fine. And by the way, you have the right to ask those questions. Elon Musk is a grown man. He knows when he gives you the right to come and interview him, he doesn't know 100% what questions you're asking him. Elon is not the type of guy, at least I don't see him being the type of guy that says, hey, send me the questions you're going to be asking him. I don't see that being Elon. Elon's like, ask me whatever you want. And by the end of it, guess what Elon did? I'm just not interested in this relationship. We're moving on. Do whatever you want to do. Contract is done. We're out of here, right? And then he goes on CNN and highlights to make CNN so proud yeah. of what he did to validate all the criticism that CNN was given Musk to be in alignment with CNN, not necessarily freedom of speech, then that's where you are. Now, to kind of go to the next part, can you pull up the Tim Pool uh, tweet, please, if you don't mind, Rob? Uh, uh, it's, it's right at one of the top tweets that I have. I've left it on for a while for people to uh, uh, enjoy and watch. Just go to this my profile. This is yesterday, Pat? This is yesterday. So the announcement was made. Go a little lower and just show the Tim Pool tweet first, if you don't mind. Zoom in. So Tim Pool. The announcement is made with Chris Cuomo. Huge F up. Chris Cuomo faked being in COVID lockdown. His brother is a murderer. No redemption arc. PBD goes CNN is very disappointing, right? Now, this is after, if you can show the picture at the bottom, with us uh, showing that Chris Cuomo joins Valuetainment. So go up and uh, show what I responded to, to uh, Tim Pool. 
My response was, Tim, I trust capitalism. One of these days, the market will wake up and realize what our vision was all along. I'm extremely comfortable being misunderstood before the market va validates our vision. I respect your impatience with our vision. In the meantime, keep kicking ass. Here's Tim Pool. The guy is very good at what he does. Sincerely, he's very good at what he does. Incredible communicator. And the way he communicates, it's very like he doesn't lag eight minutes of getting to the point. He just kind of goes, Vroom. He goes like this, and he's, he's, he's just very, very good. We had him over at the house. One day we had on the podcast. I invited him over to the house. Afterwards, we fed his entire people. We sat down. We talked. Really enjoyed talking to this guy, and he invited me to one of his events that we went to, and I think we were there together. Right? There, what a great we experience. Yeah, in Miami. What a great Miami. experience. It was a great event. Now, he did it live. So I have no comments on what to say about Tim Pool. Tim, <clears throat> keep kicking ass. You're phenomenal at what you do. I respect your game. Let me kind of uh, paint a picture of Chris Cuomo. Here's how I work. Since I was a kid being raised in a manipulative gamesmanship environment of two parents divorcing and trying to see which kid is going to go to which side and then escaping Iran, going to refugee camp, coming to the States, going to the army, trying to figure out a way to get along with everybody while I'm Middle Eastern in the army. Everybody's black, Hispanic, white and Puerto Rican. And who the hell is this Iranian guy? A lot of them had never met an Iranian before because they're from South Dakota, North Dakota, whatever all these other places are. I had to always watch and kind of size people up. I've been in a business of sizing people up for a long time. Then I go into sales and then I go into insurance. And in the insurance business, you have to watch everybody because everybody's like, oh, you're so phenomenal and flattery. And you learn about flattery bullshit. And you're so this and you're so that. No problem. Okay, sounds good. But then you go into insurance and you build a business and you start working with people and you see some people just want to use you and take advantage of you. And that's no problem. You learn that as well. And then eventually, some of the people you thought were going to be your best guys that were fully loyal to you, they backstab you. Some of the people you thought were the ones that would never ba would backstab you ended up being your most loyal guys. And the market's going to confuse you a lot. This is how the market works. You can't, because you're not God. You can't look at somebody, know exactly what that person's going to be doing. Trump fired God knows how many different people. Elon Musk fired God knows how many different people. Bezos, a couple years ago, lost his entire C-suite executive team, CFO. There is nobody in the world that knows how to pick 100% of them right. Nobody. Having said that, let me bring it back. My first conversation when I watched uh, Chris, we've criticized Chris a lot on this podcast. And if, if Chris comes from somewhere where he's going to go back to doing that, we did it on the podcast this week live when we were with Candace. I'm like, dude, you, are you trolling? Are you really saying we don't need an idea? What are you talking about, right? <clears throat> when you're saying you don't need an idea and Candace and all this stuff, we're having this civil conversation. We're having this debate. My experience with him behind closed doors has been great. He's very good to the kids. He's very respectful to the, my wife. I watch how he is around the girls in our office, uh, never above and beyond. He's very civil. The other day we were together to 5.30 in the morning. His wife's like, what time are you guys getting going? 5.30. How much have you guys been drinking? Babe, I'm getting home at 5.30 and we've had zero drinks all night. I, and with 25 of us. Yeah, nobody. So it's like, what do you, who, get, who the hell gets home at 5.30 and doesn't drink? Yeah. <laughs> this is who we are. And in life, Tim, this is the one thing you need to realize. There's two different types of people, okay? There are those who impose their values on others and change them. And then there are those who have stronger values that impose on others. If you don't, enjoy, like my values and principles are not changing. This is who I am. I'm not breaking. If you come into my environment and that makes you feel uncomfortable, you will not be in this environment long term. Meaning, if you don't do respect well, if you don't respect the woman in the environment well, if you don't, if you're somebody that drinks in, in front of me and you lose control and your lips are like this, if you're somebody that does drugs, if you're somebody that acts like a clown, if you're somebody that can do debate, you're just not going to like me. So, so this relationship right off the bat will not work out if you're somebody that does that. That's the reason why I think Don Lemon and Elon Musk had a fallen out because Elon is like straight up, this is what I'm all about, bro. What do you think Elon's sitting there and other people are changing Elon's mind? No, Elon is imposing his beliefs on others and is getting others to question themselves. This doesn't mean that Elon walks on water. This doesn't mean that Elon is 100% right. It just means the guy's convictions about his beliefs are stronger than other people's convictions. That's why he's changing the world. We are that way. Our relationship with Chris, having people here, the reason reason why I'm kind of having this conversation and bringing folks from sides that we disagree with is because we need more debate. The moment more of us keep talking and we're all agreeing on everything, the conversation is over. The more you have people around you that you're not and you're debating and the people are watching, there's a reason why the live that we did with Candace and, uh, and Chris was a number one live worldwide that day. Why? Because the world is saying 
I don't want echo chambers. I'm sick of it. And there's echo chambers for Republicans. There's echo chambers for Democrats. There's echo chambers for independents. There's echo chambers for LeBron James fans. There's echo chambers for Michael Jordan fans. There's echo chambers for every single topic. And I value debate. That's why we're excited about this partnership. How it's going to work out long term, short term, I have no clue. Chris may screw up. Chris may make a mistake and it doesn't work out. Chris may use us and go do something else. I don't think he's going to do that because we've had some incredible conversations together. We've had some phenomenal. There's like a brotherhood when we're together. You feel it. It's not an act. Off camera. You just feel that moment that we have. But if he values that, we'll be running together for a very long time to come. If he doesn't, I'm okay with that. Okay, we're not compromising our vision. We're going to roll for a very, very long time. And all, when I pray... And I'm asking God, bring the right people here that help us unify America. Simple. It doesn't mean help us make more money. Help us unify America, and we need the right leadership team. That's our vision, and that's my reaction to it. And Tim, I want you to criticize us as much as you want. I welcome it. I respect it. I appreciate it, because if we have any kind of blind spots, I want to see it. But it doesn't mean you're right. The market's going to determine who's right or wrong. And by the way, that's going to take about 10 to 20 years, but we are very patient. Okay, next topic that uh, we're done with this lemon and Tim Pool stuff. Let's go to TikTok. House passes bill that could see TikTok banned in the U.S. Okay, House passes bill that could see TikTok banned in the U.S. Let's kind of go through a couple of these things here. Robin, I think you have a video for this as well, right? The House of Representatives has passed a bill that could part pave the way for TikTok to be banned in the U.S. app stores. Both Democrats and Republicans supported the measure, which advanced out of committee in a unanimous 50-0 bipartisan vote. Interesting. It's a rare show of bipartisan unity in a heavily fractured political environment. The bill led by House China Select Committee Ch- Chair Mike Gallagher, Republican Wisconsin, and ranking member Representative Raja Krishnamurti, Democratic from Illinois, would block TikTok in the U.S. if its parent company, ByteDance, does not divest it from its within 165 days of passage. That's that's six months. I think it's six months, right? Is that about six? Yes. That's six just months, correct. give just or take, yeah, just six under six exactly. months. Uh, uh, so it would... Also require, I think it's less than six months. It's five and a half months, give or take. It would also require to be bought by a country that is not a U.S. adversary. It's not immediately clear if the Senate will take up the legislation. Tom, what do you know about this TikTok ban that we have going on here? Well, first of all, um, you, you mentioned the committee 50 to zero, but then it went to the House floor 352 to 65. Right. That is bipartisan if you've ever seen it. Um, that was strong, strong message from Congress. And what they're saying is, hey, either an American company has to understand that they need to own it, meaning on American servers, on U.S. soil, all of that, um, or it, it, you're, you're basically off the air. So we're going to cut you off and you come over here. But who's going to buy it? Who's up for this? Well, that's interesting. Do you know who the infrastructure partner, the key infrastructure partner, cloud services? It's Oracle. Oracle is the, is the infrastructure services provider for Oracle Cloud. And Larry Ellison would be the guy who's in pole position because if you buy TikTok, they don't make money yet. And part of it is the incredible infrastructure that that takes to support all the video in the background. So if if Microsoft buys uh, TikTok and they were rumored to be one of them, uh, they don't think Department of Commerce will let that happen because they already own LinkedIn and everybody's worried. It's like Spirit and Southwest Airlines couldn't get together because it would be, remember that PBD? And they would say, hey, no, 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 that's one low cost airline. That would be too much. The consumers need choice. So people don't think that Microsoft would be given permission to buy TikTok because they already have LinkedIn. There'd be too much social media power. But whoever buys it is either going to be paying Larry Ellison a ton of money for infrastructure or Larry Ellison buys it. Um, And there's really, if you look around, the people that are out there, um, Amazon is out there. And then the question is Alphabet out there. Because remember, Alphabet, Google lost. They were part of the LinkedIn bid process and they lost to uh, Microsoft that already had um, Slack and LinkedIn business services. And, and God knows they desperately needed a LinkedIn because Google Plus didn't do well. 
Correct. So the the, the poll position Tom, is, is Google Plus still active at all or no? Um, is it at all around? Like this is not a joke. I'm actually asking a real question. Well, as they say in social media, if you have to ask, it's. I don't, yeah. I don't know that. I, I don't even know if it's. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know, but I don't okay. even think it's still alive. Did they stop it? Does it say like an end date? Rob, zoom in. Does Does Google Plus have an end date? Shut down. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. They shut it down. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. So this puts Google Alphabet and Oracle side by side. So if Google buys it, they're writing big checks to Larry Ellison. Yeah. If Larry buys it, he puts all that profit in his pocket. Pa- pa- apparently this is like, by the way, and this is my opinion. Anytime Nancy Pelosi is like all in with the other side, something is off. Okay. And I just sent Rob the, the, the photo. Rob, can you show what the bill is? This, this TikTok man, they're saying is a Trojan horse that's going to be put in like, hey, we're trying to save us mm-hmm. from China when actuality, this thing is going to give the president power to t- take down any website, any app by mm-hmm. saying it's a foreign. This is it right here, Pat. If you, it, I'll read it for you. TikTok's ban uh, bill, H.R. 7521, gives the executive branch of government the power to define any platform or website as foreign owned, even if it's domestic, giving them the ability to control, censor the content being published by the company. Elon Musk posted, this law is not about TikTok. It's about censorship and government control. Think about it. They've been do- they can't shut Elon down. They can't shut down X. Now they just found the way to find, manipulate and get in there and be like, oh, this is going to give the president, the executive branch power to go, wait a minute. This is, even if it's not, even if it's domestic, they can shut down a website or, or a platform. Wow. That's the way to get... Uh, to get X. Rob, play this clip. This is my, my girlfriend, Nancy. Talk, girl. Go the ahead, girl. The main thing, though, is we want TikTok to exist. We're not there to ban it. I've said we want to make it TikTok toe. We oh, have to Jesus. see the divesting of it from of the Chinese government having the custodial possession of the of the data, whether they have used it. She's drunk. She's three martinis in. Custodial access to the data. Yeah, that's the question. So there's two questions here. The first question is, who's going to buy it? That's a question I answered, and this is what came out of committee. The second question is, to your point, very good point, is what ends up being in the bill? Bill, Exactly. Because it's a bill, not just an executive action to say, hey, for national security purposes, you need to sell and divest. They're actually putting a bill together to force it. And we all know that when it's in a bill, we had this big argument last time and I yelled at Adam, is that what's in the bill, what else is in the bill is what's the problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Vinny, you bring up a great point. The Thank whole you. Trojan horse yeah. uh, concept. Uh, Rob, I sent you something. The person that basically brought daylight about this was the representative from Kentucky, Thomas Massey. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been out there. I sent you his tweet right there. But you're absolutely right. He basically said in the tweet, the so-called TikTok ban is a Trojan horse. The website will be given the power. The, sorry, the president will be given the power to ban websites not, Not just, just oh wow! There it is right there. The person breaking the new law is deemed to be the U.S. or offshore internet hosting service or the App Store, not the foreign adversary. I'm actually super appreciative that we're hearing both sides because I've been very outspoken, especially last podcast. Like China and the CCP cannot be trusted. Espionage, data collection. Uh, surveillance, sowing discord, Gen Z indoctrination. There's a lot to be said of why disc- why TikTok should be divested, sold off, everything like that. So uh, th- there's been leaks. You know, we've talked about whistleblowers with Boeing. We've talked about whistleblowers with January 6th. There's been whistleblowers or leaks within TikTok. And um, one of the whistleblowers says, listen, whatever you hear from the CEO, Shu uh, Zichu, Uh, Don't believe it because everything is seen in China. All data flows to China. You know, we're talking about this House committee that is that voted 50 to zero to ban TikTok. Well, there's a committee in China and they're part of the CCP and they're embedded within ByteDance that owns TikTok. And Mm. you know what they're called? Mm. The committee. And they get to view all the data that is around the country, so around the world. So uh, it's 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 a great conversation to be had. I think it was. Uh, 56, 50 Democrats who voted against this, 15 Republicans, but at the end of the day, 352 congressmen. There's the number right there. Yeah. 352 to, to 65. You know, there, there's a saying out there that when both parties agree <laughs> upon something, <laughs> be good. very skeptical. Yeah. And, but you, and at Adam, the end of the day. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, at the end of the day, I'm thinking like, who's encouraging to keep TikTok? 
Who is it? Because we've heard countless calls of people calling Congress to, and it's basically keep TikTok. It's helping my business. Teenagers calling their congressmen because yeah. they're obviously this is not that addicted, though, right? This, this this isn't about shutting down TikTok because Divest. whoever ends up shutting down TikTok in the U.S., you're gonna lose that voter base, whatever that oh, voter base of, is, yeah, right? Sure. So they're all very very careful on who it gets the credit for that, of right? Of course. Yeah. So it's kind of like yesterday we're having a conversation with uh, one of my guys and. You know, the, the, he's a PHP guy, and, and the conversation is about, hey, you know, the daughter is a great, uh, is not a very good uh, swimmer, okay? Okay. And, but, but the father, it's a very, it's a very interesting dynamic. It's a, it's a, it, the, the father is like, no, but I think she's going to be an Olympic swimmer. And, and the mother was a swimmer. Oh. And the mother is telling the father, like, listen, your, 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 your daughter is not going to be a prof- Olympic swimmer. She's lazy. She doesn't do this. She doesn't do that. And people at her age, when it comes down to no, but she's going to be a swimmer. So I'm having a conversation here saying, how do I break this down to that person, the, the, my, my husband, that his, you know, my stepdaughter is not going to be a professional swimmer. I said, well, fi- always find somebody else to give. Bad news like that. <laughs> yeah. If if it's a if it's a dynamic like that, you're marrying somebody with another kid. That the 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 father is always going to protect their kids than the new spouse that they're married to. Right. Nobody here wants to get the credit for that. Having said that, that's not what they're saying. They're not saying shutting down TikTok in the states. They're simply talking about divesting and having somebody else mm-hmm. own them. Now. While they're doing that, if, Tom, you guys are saying that this is going to be a bill, they can always revert back because right now they could agree here together, right? Fast forward in 2028, go to 2032. All of a sudden, Elon Musk, hey, listen, we're not liking this and we're not, we have to divest. He owns too many companies. He owns Tesla. He owns this. He owns that. We have to divest what's going on with Twitter. And that could be a way for them to use this as a bill to get a company that is an opposing company to all the other social media companies they control to give up control as well. And you nailed it. Like, yeah. think about it. What's the, the, you know why the left hates Elon? Cause he's letting us talk. He's letting everybody open opinion, either good or bad. We get to see it. And that's why all the, what he's on drugs, his brain is gone. He's messing with women. It's, 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 this is, I'm telling you right now, this in the long run is going to come back that they're going to try to shut down X because of this type of bill. I'm telling you right now. Because, by the way, Adam, you, you said, you know who owns ByteDance? ByteDance owns TikTok, right? CCP yeah. owns 20% uh, of ByteDance. And 100% 60%, of the data. Yeah, exactly. 60% is owned by global investors and 20% uh, by the employees. That's a, it. I don't know, man. Like I said, anytime Nancy Pelosi is like, Tic Tac, I don't trust her at all. If There's she's t- pro something, I'm against it. Yeah, we, we've, we've gone pretty heavy on this. I think it comes down to two things, an executive order to demand that the data of TikTok stays in the United States and TikTok stays up. That is the path for the, uh, the, the consumers that want to use TikTok and to protect the data from getting to the CCP. When you allow Congress to do it with a bill, oh. you get the mm. sausage making and everything else that's in the bill. Well, speaking of sausage making, uh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's actually a case example here. There's precedent here, and here's where all the... Uh, Adam's gay chance. Can, you can start it now, guys. Adam's here's the gay. president. Adam's there, gay. There, there, it is. there it is. There it is. Adam's gay. Don't tell all the girls that I hang out with that I'm gay. That I don't want them to find out. Anyway, there's been precedent from this. And there was a Chinese-owned company that had to divest from their CCP overlord. And who was that? Your favorite app, Vinny? Grinder. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, no worries. So Grinder was sold by a Chinese owner after U.S. raised national security concerns it was sold for 600 million dollars back in 2020 the chinese gaming giant beijing kunlan has agreed to sell a popular gay dating app there it is rob for about 600 million dollars ending a tumultuous four years under chinese ownership yes so there's precedent here of divesting from this reuters reports that the chinese company sold 98 percent stake in grinder to u.s-based company it was so horrible because i had to 
undiluted. Let me, let, me, let me ask this question yeah. though. Let me ask this question. The, this, the, this, this is this is what kind of an app? This grinder is what? Grinder is a, a gay, gay dating, dating It's like the app. Tinder okay. for well, the as so, if they need so, it. So, so, so it's a <laughs> gay dating app. Can yeah. you find out? I'm actually really curious. Yeah. So this was started by a Chinese firm that owns 98 percent of it, and they sold it to an American it's, for it, 600 million. Here it is, right here. It says the app originally developed in LA, raised national concerns. After oh, it was okay. acquired by Beijing company in 2016 for 93 million. Uh, China. Ownership was later scrutinized by U.S. government, so it was, I guess, uh, originally. Can, can you do me a favor to an and ask if company. Grinder, what country's Grinder is in? Like, is Grinder in China? I cannot believe we're doing this, but is Grinder <laughs> in China? Right. Can you uh, just uh, meeting up at a bar? So yeah. I just say you like. Censored. I want to know what. Con- <laughs> so go, go, zoom in, zoom in right there. Government restricted countries. Of, we course. Yeah. Yeah. of course. Indonesia, Turkey, Lebanon, Qatar, Pakistan, Persia. Okay, got it. Yeah. Sanctioned countries. Crimea, Syria, North Korea, Cuba, Sudan, countries where Grindr is delisted. China. China. Are you exactly. kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding me? So they're 98%, but they're saying, let's turn everybody yeah. off. Yeah, you're gay. But no get, don't bring that into yeah, China. No you, kids. You get Oh, my you get gosh. Yeah. you well, got to be how many, kidding me. How many global users does Grindr have? Well, there's two of them in here right now. <laughs> Me and you, Vinny. Yeah, add two to that. Let's I didn't go, say me. bro. But it's, yeah, there it is. Uh, more than 13 Grindr million is the monthly. number one social oh, network for the LGBTQ gosh. community with more than 13 million wow. monthly active users in virtually every country in the world. Grinder has grown to become a fundamental part of the queer community since its launch in hey, 2009. Ahead, wow, look at that. They have tens of millions of users, man. They got users up the ass. <laughs> Tom. No, <laughs> everyone. Everyone here thinks Tom is like this, like nerdy, he's geeky, so like square guy. dirty. He's so dirty. He's so down below. dirty. You yeah, fill yeah, that well down done lemons, man. We, we, we. But uh, what's interesting, and this is actually being serious. You know, we're talking about divesting or banning TikTok, whatever they're discussing right now. You know, in America, you know, the joke is like, I don't need Chinese uh, stealing my data. We got American-owned companies to do that. I got Facebook to do that. But the reality is this. None of the apps that are founded here in America, whether it's Facebook, Meta, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, anything like that, are allowed in China. Zero. None of them whatsoever. You've talked yeah, about this yeah, a million times. Yeah. Yet TikTok is the fastest growing app, especially among Gen Z. It's just it's sort of uh, ironic that they're not allowed in China, but they can basically indoctrinate our youth here yeah, in America. Weird. Well, listen, I'm no sure, I'm sure the audience that's listening to this, Tom, are super grateful for learning about Grinder through Adam. And yeah. guys, yeah. if you want to, about, maybe if you mm-hmm. don't use the app Grinder and you want to use it in a different app, yeah. you can connect with Adam <laughs> instead of using <laughs> Grinder no right there. there. That's his uh, QR yeah. code. And uh, you can send your support his way. And who knows? Maybe some of you guys can convert him into getting on Grinder, but uh, that's what we have right now. Tom, were you going to say something about Grinder? Yeah, no, no, I was going to say something about China. They may not allow Grinder and things like this, but they sure have quiet capitalism because you notice they bought Grinder for ninety three million and they sold it for nine hundred. Yeah. So there may be communism there, but the CCP and the overlords. Deep underneath, they appear to be capitalists. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Now let's go to the next story. Next story is Trump. Uh-oh. wins the Republican nomination, and so does Biden. Mm. Okay, so setting up the rematch between the two. Uh, 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 so let's let's read this, because some of the polls that uh, Tom's about to show you guys uh, in the battlegrounds polls. is insane. Donald Trump has uh, clinched the Republican presidential nomination, capping off a stunning political comeback fueled by grievance and vengeance and formally entering what's poised to be the longest and costliest general election in recent memory. The former president on Tuesday night crossed the threshold for the number of delegates needed to become the GOP nominee. The AP reported that allows Trump a free reign to consolidate the Republican Party's political operation and fully turn his attention towards a rematch with Biden if elected. Trump has vowed to root out the so-called deep state of civil servants, crack down on illegal immigration, enact protectionist trade policies, and curtail the U.S.'s role in the world. Tom, how big of a deal is this, and what were some of the battlegrounds numbers you were looking at that uh, the audience should be aware of? Well, we didn't go to CNN. We didn't go to Fox. We didn't go to any of a number of things. We went to Bloomberg that ran a very academic uh, set of polls. And Rob, if you could pull these up, look at these battleground polls right now. By the way, the, the they did a synopsis of sentiment, and a synopsis of sentiment 
sentiment is you ask the, the voter their general sentiment. And here is their response. Their response is that basically they hear from Biden, Trump bad, Trump evil. So that's what they're hearing. And what they're hearing from Trump, immigration a problem, economy a problem. Those were the top two. We know immigration is number one. We've heard these polls before, right, Adam, that the immigration is number one. So that's what we're hearing. And so voters are hearing issues from Trump, those two, and they're hearing basically just Trump's a bad guy from Biden. Isn't that interesting? So what do they think about it in the polls? The Bloomberg polls, please, Rob. Check this out. Let's go battleground states. Arizona, Trump at 49 percent plus six to 43 battleground state, Georgia, all that negative publicity, all the stuff you think Georgia didn't like Trump because of the court cases. Whoops. Trump, 49, Biden, 43, Trump, six in Georgia. And Tom, this is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg. And it shows no bounce from the state of the union. Michigan. The actually the tightest of the battleground, Trump 46, Biden 44, Trump plus two, Nevada. You've got uh, what is that? SEIU. I hope I'm saying it right. The uh, Service Employees Union, which is so big in Nevada, carried Harry Reid carried that union in his pocket for so long. Um, it's actually Trump 48, Biden 42, Nevada plus six Trump, North Carolina, Trump 50. Biden, 41. Trump, plus nine. Pennsylvania. Here it is. Trump, 49. Biden, 43. Trump, plus six. Wisconsin. Trump, 46. Biden, 42. Trump, plus four. Ladies and gentlemen, today, Bloomberg, all the battleground states, the battlegrounds are defined as Michigan, the blue wall battleground is what they call it. Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Trump, three to nothing. And the second tier battleground they call North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. Trump threw to nothing. And then you throw in Nevada, which usually doesn't matter in the election. If the election was held today, this is over. But, but, but here's my question, though. With all the, all the information, because, Rob, you had this chart a while ago, with all the states that require no photo ID, all this mail-in ballot, the Democrats to me don't seem like they're panicking. Tom, is that is the Democrats mailing? don't seem like they're panicking? I, the I, Democrats have been panicking everywhere, with all due respect. I don't, okay, but go, go, go I'll mean, say my are, part after look you. Look listen to all the things they've been saying that they've been panicking. Vinny, about. you know what uh, Bill Maher, do not, with all due respect, is code word for uh, don't go be, fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but on the other hand, yeah, yeah. But if Tom finished, because I, I want to still no, ask no, my no, question. No, no, no. I mean, you, we've seen Democrats and their proxies panicking for weeks. And they were hoping that the State of the Union would be a bounce. And as I said on the podcast where we have Candace, I said I thought the tone was sharp, the tone was bright, he looked sharp, but there was nothing said of substance that the voter was going to cling on to. The polls are showing that. Okay, so here's my question, though. I'm going to just 2020, we're all asleep. And remember that chart? It's uh, Trump and then Biden. And then all of a sudden, overnight, mail-in ballots went like this. It shot up, Tom, and everybody lost their minds. My question is, even though this is saying this, is the no voter ID, no photo ID, mail-in ballot situation, that's why I'm saying they're not panicking, that they know at the end of this, if the court thing doesn't work or all this shit that's happening with Trump, that's their shoe-in to win because they put all the laws in place after COVID. Like, I, I'd be lying if I said I'm not worried about you know, election security and all the things that go with it. I'd be lying. But I'm also have faith in the American voter and what's going on here. If this is really the case and this is stolen, I mean, forget January 6th. The country's going to go ape. Let me ask you this question. Let's say New York Post tweet is left on. Okay, and wasn't taken down. You know which one I'm talking about. Hunter Biden life, Hunter, laptop. Hunter Biden yeah, yeah. Laptop. And this was what October surprises. What did they call it? October, October, October surprises. Surprise. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say that's left. Okay. And they don't take it down. Call fake news and 50 different former, you know, uh, intelligence people have signed that this is all bullshit. Fake, right? We all saw it was all a lie, right? And let's say uh, uh, there is no gamification. No drop in nothing. We find out that night whether Trump or Biden wins. By how much do you think Trump would have won that night in 2020? Even, even with the mail-in ballot? Um, no, no, no. We don't go the additional 15, 20 days, whatever. Oh, okay. That night, that Tuesday, when we're up 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, the votes. let's say they count everything that night. By how much do you think Trump would have won? If you think that's the case, by how much? He would have had, I've done the math, he would have touched 300 electoral votes. 
he would have touched 300 electoral votes. Yep. And so, you only need 279. That's right. So you're saying it would have been a slam dunk, not even a problem. He would have won. Uh, uh, things like Georgia would have flipped because they were razor thin. I think Pennsylvania would have stayed with him. And they're saying just because of the, the polling that they said that people, if that Remember, was, was true, so that close. decision would have but, but he, bing, bing, bing. The reason why I'm asking this is the following. You know, in the game when you're playing and they say, listen, the NFL wants LeBron to win the championship. We know that. The NBA, NBA wants LeBron to win the championship. The NFL wants Patrick Mahomes to win the championship. Like, you know how there's always that talk where who the NFL or the NBA the would Lord. want that yeah. to win the championship. And one bad call is right. like, that's or, their magic or, or, switch. Or, for example, like even in boxing, hey, boxing wants Fury to beat Ngannou because there's no way Fury. So, so guess where you don't want it to go to? Guess where you don't want it to go to? Where? A decision, right? Hmm. That's what they say. So... Trust me, the calls are going to go for Kansas City. You know, like the, what's the one thing? They haven't had a holding uh, call called on them for I don't know how many quarters or whatever they all, everybody oh, yeah. talks the about, right? The offensive line yeah. was perfect angels. So they said in the three Super Bowls, there's never been a holding call on the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Can you fact check me, Rob? It's one of those things where no holding call Kansas City Chiefs. Just type that and something will come up. Kansas City Chiefs, see which one comes up. Zoom the victors. Not called for a single holding call. The offense was called for holding penalty. And you can just hear once in the last three Super Bowls. Three Super yeah. Bowls. So, Two players so, mugging him right there. Yeah. So, so, so meaning that the holding. So, anyway, so, but imagine you're the other team, okay? And you're the coach. How do you coach that team? Do you coach the team to make sure the referee's on your side? Or how do you coach them? You coach the team and you say, what? Listen. Here's what you got to realize. They're going to call it against you. They're going to want them to win. Mm -hmm. They're going to favor them. Whatever you do, you have to win big. You can't win by, you know, fourth quarter, three minutes left where, you know, you were, we're up three. You can't do it based on that. They're going to give them the calls. We have to make sure we go so big that if they do any of the calls, we win by two or three touchdowns. We cannot win by a field goal because we're not going to, okay? So what's the point here? There's a big difference between this and 2024. I think 2020, to me, uh, uh, was a very, very super close game. Very super close game. And guess what? The referees didn't call holding on the New York Post Twitter account, mm -hmm. the tweet. You had to know that. Yeah. They're not going to call the tweet for you. They're not going to call holding. And so you made the race be close and you lost, right? So there, there's a part of that. But it doesn't mean it's not cheating. Of course it's cheating. Yeah. It doesn't mean any of that. Of course, hey, why are you not? And then later on, why do you 50 intelligence people came out and now we know it was true? What are you talking about? All that manipulation that they did. The only difference that they don't have now, uh, uh, Vinny, is the following. Now we know that that tweet was right. Now we know the 50 intelligence were lying. Now we know, and now we know he doesn't bring world peace. Mm -hmm. Now we know the Amer now we know life is more expensive for Americans. Now we know, now you know, here's what you have right now, which is very, very difficult for these guys. Nobody can say, you don't know how a Trump uh, uh, candidacy is going to be. And nobody can say, you don't know what a Biden candidacy is going to be. Nobody. There is no, well, what if this? Speculation. There yeah, is you zero know. speculation. You know Biden, you know Trump. Now, this is proof. Yeah. These are facts. <clears throat> These are not hypotheticals. RFK, we don't know. Very good point. So that's the part we don't, but we do know exactly what happened with Trump, and we do know exactly what happened with Biden. Now go make the decision based on us. So I think it's going to be a very different 2024 than 2020. And do, and do you think in your heart of hearts, though, if, if the they that the they that Biden keeps yeah. talking about because yeah. he's not mm. running the show because that's what they've always wanted, do you genuinely think that if it gets to where they know that that because they've already cheated how many times if they see that and they see this, Tom? What like do you think that there's a, an actual genuine possibility that they try to do something to make us not vote or to do something on that election like in the, in that month? They may. And I, guess I, what? Yeah. Guess what? You have to be ready for that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I've been no, telling no, people. They all may. Time. You have to be ready for it. Yep. They may. And and th there has to be, you know, like uh, 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 it was Manhattan Beach where the BLM tried to go riot. You know what yep. happened on Manhattan Beach when they no, tried no, no. to Huntington, Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach. Do you know what happened when they tried to ride Huntington no. Beach? No. The people showed up. Oh, <laughs> oh straight really? up. 
Oh, really? Oh, oh, straight up. But like bikers, everybody showed up. They said, come on, let's go. Let's go do something. Oh, really? Yeah, they show me. And then they're like, ah, uh, no, not a good idea. Turn around. They left. Okay. They, they went to Glendale. They tried to do whatever they were doing with LGBTQ on Glendale with the kids. Oh, yeah. Mom you know what happened with Armenian parents grandma, showing up? You know what they did? Yeah. You don't mess with Armenians. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They showed up. So to me, I think there has to be an element of saying, don't do this again. Don't try this again. OK, there's a community of people that literally have nothing to lose. I think this is the wrong time for them to play those games. Yeah. I think that's the wrong time for them. I hope so. I, I think that's the wrong time for to them your to play point, those games. People know what Biden is. People know what Trump is. And Biden saying the sentiment. This is not Tom. Not Bizdoc, this is not me. The sentiment people in these states were saying he keeps saying Trump bad, Trump wrong. And it's not sticking. That's they're saying, wait a minute. I know Trump. I know what happened to the economy. I know what he tried to do at the wall. I know what's going on. And it's not sticking. And instead, Trump is saying, look at immigration. Look at the economy. It's sticking because they know it's real. It's not perception. So I trust the voters. And right now, battleground voters are saying, I had enough and I'm going this way. I hope hope so. Let me just weigh in for a sec. Uh, These spring polls, you know, they're, they're helpful. Uh, but we're eight, nine months away from the election. A lot of things can change. So let's just establish that. And we all know the following. There's 100,000 people in this country that determine the outcome of every single election. And they're in these battleground states that we just mentioned, the blue wall of Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, throwing a little bit of Georgia, throwing a little bit of Nevada, North Carolina. Boom, you have your election. It's not 80 million votes on one side and 78 million on the other side. It's 100,000 people that basically have... Uh, bipolar complex every four to eight years when they vote for Bush, then Obama, and then Trump, and then Biden, they go back and forth. So, and my grandma's one of them. She voted for Bush, and then she voted for McCain, and then she voted for Trump, and then she voted for Biden. Like, uh, she just goes back and forth, and she's in where it is? Michigan. And that's how people operate there. So here's what I can guarantee. These, you know, I got a lot of heat in 2020 where I was like, they were, I was said, look guys, uh, I follow the Vegas odds. Uh, Biden's favored. You're crazy. He's not going to win. I go, I'm just following the Vegas odds. So right now, Trump is favored. And everyone's like, you can't trust the polls. You can't trust the odds. Well, turns out you're good. So it's interesting that now that Trump is sort of favored, we kind of trust these polls. Here's what I can guarantee. In October, you're going to hear the following story. Race heats up. Too close to call. Get to the polls. You'll never know what's going to happen. Need your vote. Rock your vote. So that's something I can guarantee. Last point of this. Today, the number of the day is four. So because today marks the four year anniversary of when Trump declared a national state of emergency because of COVID. It was today, four years ago. Since then, the United States government has spent and printed $4.4 trillion to basically fight off COVID and the pandemic. Both candidates are polling in the low 40s. Biden, some say he's in the high 30s. You know, it's neck and neck, whatever, depending on the state. They're both in the low 40s. Um, and the question is, which one of these candidates, the old and senile Joe Biden or the old and angry Donald Trump, deserves Four more years. So we'll see what happens there. By the way, I don't know if you heard uh, in Georgia, I believe they dropped five of the counts against Trump. Six. So six, six Six of the counts. You're right. So it went from 91 to now 85 counts. So as far as 85, there it is, six counts. So 85, it's now 85 counts. So you have the 85 counts against Trump. And by the way, if Biden does win, how old will he be at the end of his term? 85 years old. There's some numbers. But he won't he remember the day that he was sworn in. But go ahead. Yeah. He'll forget that day. Just well, let's can't... go into that story. Yeah. So ex-special counsel Robert Hur on Capitol Hill for bombshell testimony. Rob, if you want to get the video ready as well, I'll come to you in a second. So, uh, uh, um, by, by the way, I like the way he talks. Very interesting. Very smart he, guy. You know, He's the way smart. he talks. So, um, former special counsel Robert Hur revealed in Capitol Hill testimony that Biden willfully retained classified material as private citizen and gave them to Marcus wanted her, the ghostwriter of his $8 million book, who later tried to destroy them. He pushed back on Democrats who claimed his report cleared Biden of any wrongdoing, saying it did not exonerate the president. What did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? 
What did he do after you were named special counsel? House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan asked the former special counsel. He slid those files into the uh, recycle bin on his computer. He tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? Asked Jordan. Correct, said her. Rob, do you have that clip? I, 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 which clip do you have, Rob, that uh, you were... Sorry, I have something playing in the background. I have um, a few of his clips. The one where he talks about Biden's memory, and then there's also the Jim Jordan clip. Go, as well. go, to, go to the Jim Jordan clip first, since we're on it, and then we'll go to the Biden memory because before we forget. So just <laughs> before we forget, <laughs> go ahead. When was I in? Yeah. Sorry, I've got computer lock up right now. You do okay. So, yeah. uh, the, Vinny, go ahead. Well, well, first of all, I, did you just read? Like, here's the thing. This is that double standard crap that drives me through the wall. Uh, it said he says, and this is an, an investigator for Congress that Biden willfully retained classified materials and gave them to a civilian. Do you understand what that? Pat, I had top secret clearance in the military. You are finished. You are you are getting kicked out. You're going to jail. You are done. Why is it that this guy can get away with all this stuff is coming out? It's front of our face. You should have seen these hearings, Tom. I, don't know, I watched all of it. The, everybody from the clips, everybody yeah. from the Democratic side is going after this guy like he's like he's the devil. They're like, "What are you saying? Why would you do this?" His me- he's like, "I'm just telling you." They're like, "You're a Republican, aren't you?" And he's like, "Guys." I'm just telling you, the guy didn't know who he was or when he was even put into office as, as a vice president. He's lost his mind. Rob, you got it? Yes. Uh, so what clip would you like first? We have him talking about Robert Hur testifying that Biden tried to get rid of the documents. Yeah, play that the clip Ghost first. Play that clip first. This is a quote. Joe Biden risked serious damage to America's national security when he shared information with his ghostwriter. Shared it with his ghostwriter, the guy who was helping Joe Biden get eight million dollars. Mm. And oh, by the way, Mr. Her, what did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? What did he do after you were named special counsel? Chairman, if you're referring to the audio recordings that Mr. Zwanitzer created of his conversations with exactly Biden, what I'm referring to, he. he uh, he slid, if I remember correctly, <laughs> uh, he slid those files into his uh, recycle bin on his computer. Tried to, tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? Correct. The very guy who was helping Joe Biden get the $8 million, the $8 million Joe Biden had used, w- w- the motive for Joe Biden to, to disclose classified information, to retain classified information, which he definitely knew was against the law, when you get... By the way, he was also at the UFC fight. He was right yeah, behind me. Shook my hand twice. I love him. Of yeah. course, not wearing a sports jacket. Just go ahead and play. Tie in a shirt. Yeah. Play this next clip. Go ahead. Jordan was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was there. The evidence and the president himself put his memory squarely at issue. We interviewed the president and asked him about his recorded statement. "Quote: I just found all the classified stuff downstairs." End quote. <laughs> he told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Most importantly, what I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. I did not sanitize my explanation. Nor did I disparage the president unfairly. I explained to the attorney general my decision and the reasons for it. That's what I was required to do. Like, like, are we? Do you guys remember when Trump? They said Trump had uh, documents in his. What was it? At Mar-a-Lago, this dude it has stuff, and he gave them to a ghostwriter that has zero clearance about God knows what, bro. Do you want to talk about? Uh, National security threat like that. It's living sitting in the White House right now is Joe Biden. Like, what are we the, let me continue about? reading this. So New York was Biden forgot year of son's death. Ugh. Trump's election and special counsel Robert Hurd interview. President Biden confused key dates during the October interview with special counsel Robert Hurd. Do you have that, Rob, that he says that in the interview as well? I don't know if you have it. If you don't, see if you can find it. Forgetting which year his son Bo died of brain cancer, as well as the year Donald Trump was elected president. <laughs> a transcript of the sit down shows during a discussion of why he kept sensitive papers after leaving the vice 
presidency in 2017, Biden launched into a rambling explanation in which he said Bo, who died in 2015, was deployed or is dying after he left office in 2017. I don't know. This is what, 2017, 2018, that area. Biden uh, queered uh, uh, during the first two days of questioning by her on October 8th when asked, where did you keep papers after leaving office, Vice President, when you were living at Chain Bridge Road in Northern Virginia? Biden proceeded to ask, what month did Bo, uh, what month did Bo die? Oh, my oh God, May 30th? Moments later, Biden referenced Trump's election to the presidency and asked if he had been elected on November of 2017 rather than the previous year. He doesn't and know this is the on. guy that's the president. The United States. Unbelievable. It's crazy. And Adam said it. We, American has to decide. Which one do you want? Do you want the old senile guy or, 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 the, or the angry guy? I would much rather have a boss, a CEO that does everything, secures, gives us money, protects us, and he's a little mean at times than a guy that has no idea what the hell he's doing, doesn't know what, like, zero security. But guess what? He doesn't say mean things to me. Well, you know what? This pisses me off for a whole nother reason. And I think the whole thing was missed by the media. It was missed by Fox. It was missed by everybody. Her did his job. He worked for the government as a prosecutor. He was given a case. He deposed a witness. He wrote a report on that, which was validated by the tapes and the recordings of that report. And because one side, the president's allies, didn't like what he said, he gets hauled before Congress to sit in front of a hearing. That is his reward for going to law school, becoming a prosecutor, serving his country. He is serving his country as in this position. You have to understand, he's not wearing a uniform, but he's in our government serving it. He's given an assignment. He does that. And to reward him because they don't like what's in it, they haul him in here. And then I think he acquitted himself very well here. He looked professional. He looked precise. He looked well organized. And it could kind of pisses me off that for doing your job in a partisan government, this is your reward. By the way, play this clip, Rob. Which one is this, Rob? This is where um, Representative Dean asked him to clarify or re take back the statement regarding uh, Joe Biden forgetting the month of his son's death. And Robert Hur doesn't. Let's see what he says. And I want to give you a chance, since the transcript is out, uh, to correct the record on an important point. Uh, very sadly, uh, your report on page 208 says that Mr. Biden couldn't come up with the date, the year of his son, Bo Biden's death, when in fact in the transcript it shows that you asked him the month. And do you know what he said, Mr. Herr? He said, oh God, May 30th. Would you like to correct the record? His memory was pretty firm on the month and the day. Congresswoman, I don't believe that's correct with respect to the transcript, but if you could refer me to a specific page, I'd be happy to look. Uh, <laughs> and my second document to clarify for you, <laughs> sir, Mr. Herr, uh, from the transcription, uh, page 82, the words are President Biden's. What month did Bo die? Oh, God, May 30th. A searing memory. I ask unanimous consent. Without objection. <clears throat> so this is what, about remembering the day? Yeah. Well, if I can uh, just uh, bring up a point here. I, whenever somebody is under oath, you know, what's the famous quote that they said about basically this whole situation is that Joe Biden is a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Yeah. If you've ever seen anybody under oath, there's sometimes three magic words they always say. Jeff Sessions made this word, who was the attorney general under Trump in 2016, 17, and Trump fired him. There's three magic words they always say. So they I don't, don't get recall. Trouble. I don't, don't recall. recall. <laughs> yeah. I don't recall. Uh, uh, Jeff Sessions said that exact same phrase what felt like a billion times. You can probably pull that up, Rob, Jeff Sessions. So when someone's under oath and they don't want to get themselves in hot water, it's very easy to say, oh, you know, I don't recall. I, I don't recall. I don't recall. Now, you know, here it is right here. I don't know if you I, that's not going to be the video, um, but if you could probably play it. Uh, there it is. I mean, there's a million memes. If you go down to the elf on the shelf right there, I, don't recall. I mean, that was basically Jeff Sessions. By the way, he was the first person to endorse Trump and he was the first person that got thrown under the Trump train uh, during the Russian uh, hoax. And I will yep. I have to admit that it yep. was. Obviously, a hoax at this point. It was ridiculous with I the Mueller report. So, um, you know, I don't put a lot of stock into basically people under oath uh, when they say, I don't recall, I don't recall, I don't recall. They do it on the left. They do it on the right. So if you're not going to, you know, hold both sides accountable, 
Um, you're, you're making a point here, but there's a, something I think is missed. When other people are, are under oath and they're saying, I don't recall, they're trying, it's, it's akin to almost taking the fifth. Right. When Biden says, I don't recall, I believe him. Yeah, exactly. It's a whole, yeah, it's a difference. Well, I mean, <laughs> look, the, the meaning is different. It, it, does he have some gaps and some me- memory issues? And by the, f- I'm not defending Biden, but the problem is this, really? guys. And we did this on the Cuomo Candace Owens podcast. When you set the bar so low for this guy, and he puts a sentence together, you're gonna look like, oh, he's yeah. he's brain dead. He's a vegetable. He's yeah. got dementia. Yeah. But then when he goes in there and basically crushes an hour and a half speech, yeah. it's just gonna well, make well, people my, look my, like they're, my thing, they're talking. Well, about. my my thing. But besides the memory thing, it's you had classified. God knows what classification, secret, top secret. What? Why? Why are you letting a writer who doesn't have any clearance go anywhere near that? Like, what? What are you talking about? That's the pre- vice president or anything. That's that is 100 percent impeachable mm-hmm. offense. Get his ass out. That's if it was Trump. If Trump did this, what would have happened? Be honest, Tom. If that happened with Trump, like he gave documents to a, a ghostwriter that was writing or, something like to get or him. Or if he was suspected out. of having documents, I don't know. They send 40, 50 guys to your house, break mm-hmm. into things, find a locked closet, break into that. It, hypothetically. Got you. Okay, I'm just curious. All right, let's go into the next story here. So. Um, United Airlines reports fifth incident in over a week as U.S. bound flight returns to Australia. By the way, this is after Boeing lost four billion dollars of valuation in a single day. You're saying day. there was a, a new incident, another yes. one. Yes, and, uh, it was a DJ Since Khaled. Since everything that has happened, another one. Yeah, the yes. DJ another Khaled one. of airlines Shout and another Miami. one. Yeah. So, and by the way, uh, uh, even United told Boeing to stop making the Max tens. The airline ordered. Look, can you imagine? Like, hey, man, stop building this. We're not interested. But United Airlines Boeing 777-300 aircrafts suffered a uh, mid-air fuel leak and was forced to make an emergency landing Monday, marking the fifth incident the airline reported in a little over a week. United Airlines 830 took off for a 14-hour journey from Sydney to uh, San Francisco, but only two hours into the flight, the plane had to be redirected over a maintenance issue. Monday's incident is the latest in a string of mishaps suffered on board. Uh, a Boeing aircraft on March 4th, a Boeing 737 was forced to make an emergency landing in Texas just minutes into a flight after flames exploded from one of its jet, jet engines. Jeez. A shocking video from the ordeal showed flames spewing. Do you have that video, by the way, to show that, Rob? Do you have the video? I mean, can you imagine you're on a flight? By, by the way, I've been on a flight that this has happened. The, the, and we were on, on our way to Hawaii. And I'll tell you here the oh story. But go, go ahead and play this clip, Rob. Oh, my God, bro. And ladies and gentlemen, we realized something happened outside. We realized yeah. something <laughs> happened <laughs> outside. <laughs> what the hell are you talking you about? You're on a flight. You're like, so we're on a flight to Hawaii. It's me, Mario, and Paul, and a couple of our guys. And all of a sudden, the plane starts going really slow, and it goes lower. And everybody's freaking out and said, we're going to have to turn around on the way to Hawaii. We're turning around. I asked the f- uh, flight attendant, I'm like, hey, is everything okay? I looked at her face. It was not. She didn't answer. She was so scared. She ran off. She wouldn't even. That's when I knew something was going down. Oh my God. When we landed, there's like 50 fire trucks waiting for us. Then we're looking outside. The engine was on fire the entire time. What? Yeah. It was, it was wild. So what the- it is a very scary feeling. But this is losing a lot of credibility right now with this taking place. And this Go is, ahead, And this is, dude, like, if you think about it, the doors are flying off. The wheels are flying off. Yeah. The, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah. Bro, I was, you know what? Terrorists, right now, they're probably, like, relieved. They're like, hey, Amir, we have to cancel the trip. Why? We're not, we don't have to blow it up. Boeing is just, <laughs> the airplane's going to do it by themselves. The inside job. Inside, yeah, this what do you mean? With virgins, we'll go to Vegas. As virgins, yeah. we don't need to blow ourselves up. This, oh. is, this is the flight, and somebody's recording it just like, hey, my family's on there. And there's fuel coming out of the back. Do you see this one, right? Where is it at? This is the one, Rob? Yeah, see? But see all that stuff coming out? That's not good. That's not good, guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, I've said this. A three podcasts, four podcasts ago, something big is like they're gonna lose a, f- a plane and they're finished. Nah, they're gonna be finished. I don't that redemption story stuff that you're gonna talk this? about. You know, take plane off, loses tire. Lose, watch this. Look at the tire. Watch. Ready? Ready? Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> guys, well, hey, imagine that. Hey, guys, just listen. <laughs> don't look outside the window. We lost the tire, but we have 13 more. <laughs> Let me add another story, then I want to get your yeah. reaction to this. FAA inspection, <laughs> check this out. Finds Boeing mechanics using dish soap. 
and hotel key cards as makeshift tools. What? First, when you guys told me the story yesterday, Rob, I thought this was a joke. The recent six weeks of investigation started after a large window ejected in January, revealing many quality issues. The audit found that Boeing and Spirit didn't meet necessary quality standard often. Boeing passed only 56 out of 89 product audits, failing 33 audits with 97 non-compliance instances noted. Spirit Aerosystems <laughs> underwent 13 audits, failing to meet the standard in seven instances. The FAA's report gives details, insights into issues with the manufacturing process. During the inspection, the safety agency noticed Spirit Mechanics using a hotel key card to inspect a door, <laughs> a method not specified in the official instructions the New York Times reported. Additionally, the FAA, FAA observed mechanics applying lu- liquid soap oh. as a makeshift <laughs> lubricant during assembly, later cleaning the seal with damp cheesecloth. <laughs> is, is this is this real? Dude, bro? I'm never flying. <laughs> By yeah. the way, and Adam, you talked about this earlier. Yeah. Adam, Adam, do, do your part because I want to say something well, funny. I, you know, <laughs> uh, John Oliver did a whole oh, expose on this. Obviously, we've been covering this story. We covered it oh. last time. But Al Jazeera went undercover, not even undercover. They went and did a report, and they started interviewing uh, the these people. <laughs> Employees of South Carolina, the, Boeing, okay, a Boeing Exactly. Plant. There you go. And he started asking questions. Simple question. Uh, <laughs> would you fly on these planes? And the responses were shocking. You know, one was like, hell no. Nah. And then there was a, look, I think this quality is kind of going down. It's kind of <laughs> going to shit. One guy's like, look, it's a little sketchy. And then one guy, I won't forget, he was like, yeah, I'd fly it. But I kind of got a little bit of a death wish. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, but, I think 10 out of 15 what, said what, no way. What, what essentially the conclusion was is they were more focused on their stock price going up than these planes staying up in the air. And that was uh, sort of pervasive when they used their uh, slogan, their mantra, and this is in 2021, more for less. And they basically encouraged all Boeing employees, quote unquote, to play an important role in improving shareholder value. So (laughs) when you're more concerned with shareholders than customers and safety, of course, ridiculous things like this. Here's my only question. How much of this is on Boeing and how much of this is on the airlines and what they do? Okay, so like Boeing makes the planes, but when you buy it, like are you not doing safety checks? Do you not have a crew out there? Like, you know, there's some wear and tear on these airlines. Yeah. It's not like when Boeing sells you the plane, they're coming in after each flight and being like, all right, how you doing? Like, that's the airline's responsibility. So, yes, you know, I'm not shirking responsibility from Boeing. I don't know what the hell they're doing with dishwasher and credit yeah. cards. But at what point is United Airlines, American Airlines, Alaska Airlines, whatever, how much of this is on them? That's my only question. Pat, when you said the flight attendant, was it a guy or a girl? When you, when girl. 100% it was a girl. girl. Okay. Yeah. Because if, let's just be honest. The majority of flight attendants that are male mm-hmm. are in the LGBTQ. Snacks. Group. They're just like, like, I, like the la- I, I think that's kind of da- – if shit's going down, could you mm-hmm. imagine the panic of a gay guy like, hey, guys, yeah. we're going down. <laughs> it's right. like, wait, I don't, that guy's going to lose his shit. Fun fact. You know those guys' favorite app? What? Grinder. Grindr. Yeah, there it is. What's up, Tom? Tom? Back to the first. Well, <laughs> I think Adam almost touched what, what, what on what some. What was that? Word? Wait, Tom's like, I, 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 I can't. Adam Guys, listen, just thing. put your gas Wait, mask Tom on. Ju- going- Adam almost touched what? Yeah, what happened? Touch it, Tom. Adam was trying. Touch Adam, it, Tom. Adam. Yeah, I, I brought the, that back. I was going to say, Adam touch touched him? on something. Did he touch um, it? Oh, yeah, the, Tom. And it's basically, there are more than just Boeing stock price here. There's United stock price, mm-hmm. American stock price, yeah. Delta stock price, Spirit, and our good friends at Southwest. And the mechanics union is represented across the board, and each airline has their own mechanics and is responsible for maintenance. And our understanding, as you read this thing, if they discover something that that is on multiple planes the same way, Boeing comes in. But they're responsible for doing it. Those tires weren't changed as a normal thing. (laughs) Tires wear out on planes the way they wear out on your car. Those tires weren't changed by Boeing. They were changed by United. Correct. That's United Mechanics there. Now, door plug on the side of the plane... I don't, I don't, Boeing took credit for that because that's the design of the plane. They're not, mm-hmm. you know, United's not screwing, putting screws on the side of the plane as regular maintenance. So it goes both sides here. But the, the first thing I want to say is, you know what? I am, 
I rarely compliment a government agency, but since the two crashes where they grounded the 737 MAX, there have been no crashes. And these incidents are called out and the news is big and the whistleblower, what a tragedy, that guy, um, on Boeing. But we haven't had crashes yet. Yet, and I oh, hope God. not. But our FAA is stepping in, and this is the government agency mm-hmm. doing what it's supposed to do step in and saying, WTF, guys, you can't have that. You, airline, have to be doing maintenance. You, Boeing, and then United says, hey, those other planes I ordered, don't make them. I'm not taking them. And the FAA is mm-hmm. backing them up. That's on well, the, we, the, we the ha- 10 back. Great point, Tom, that it's, uh, it is on the mechanics within the airlines, but we have had crashes. Thank God it just happened, hasn't happened in the United States. You know, we forget Indonesia flight. Never. Those are the two crashes I mentioned on the 737 Max. If Ethiopia took off. So, like, imagine you're just going on a flight. Oh, God. Hey, I'll see you in a few my hours. Biggest fear. You never heard from again. It's my biggest fear. Think God. I mean, God. Well, I'm thinking about, but it's like there's been five in, in a month. It's like, guys, you, what, what are they doing to I change? Mean, what's the question when people are on flight? Like, the fear. What do you call that? There's a, there, like, f- fear, fear of flying. flying. Well, my fear yeah. of flying. Rob, Rob can, you, can you put a poll and oh, ask? God. Do you have a fear of flying? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, hey. Yes, no, a little bit. A little bit. By the like way, that. he did a poll last time, Rob. What were the results with that? Like, would you feel comfortable flying? Yeah, Boeing? no, people what were concerned. It? I'm just saying. What was the poll I, results last time, Rob? Because it was like 70, 30, 80, 20 that oh, they God. were concerned. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, 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 but the thing is, like, for the people who are afraid of flying, I want to sit next to them. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit next to them. I just want to be like, did you feel that? <laughs> Do you Whoa. smell yeah. turbulence? Turbulence. Did you t- look, 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 look outside. Oh my God. Oh my God, they're turning the sun's going on. Oh no. <laughs> that, did something come off the You know who I want to sit next to? BBD? You know who I want to sit next to? I want to sit next to a big, manly guy who's a little bit scared of heights. Yeah, yeah, That's what I want to do. Yeah, <laughs> not on planes though. For me, it's right. it's called balconies on yes. the 60th floor, and you're standing looking over, saying, "Look at this view here." Oh, like, no. Yeah, man, I'm thinking four <laughs> kids. Not gonna happen exactly. with me. Oh no, huh? But uh, uh, but yeah. So what does it say? Yes, you have a fear of flying. You know, yes, no, a little bit. You know what to help me 27%. overcome my fear of flying? Because I used to get a little uh, anxiety with it. I was flying. This was when I was dating the girl from London, and we were flying back from London back to Miami. And we were sitting next to a pilot. You know, sometimes like a pilot will yeah. catch a ride. And like, you know, the plane and, the, and yeah, it's, going, turbulence. it's like turbulence. And like, you know, you just hold on. Whoa. And it, w- it was a lady, actually. She's like, you know what? Why? What's going on here? You know? Yeah. A lady pilot. United. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, and I go, yeah, I don't know. Just she goes, listen, you're from Miami. You've been on a boat before. You know, when you're going over the waves, there's like a little bit of turbulence. It's the waves. That's all this is. It's just you're going over airwaves. Like, that's a like, cool. Yeah. It's just like a boat, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Miami. So that helped me actually a little bit. Let's 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 talk about something serious. Serious. Okay. Peter uh, pressures first lady Uh-oh. Jill Biden to swap eggs for potatoes at annual Easter egg roll. Um, spotta- spectacular, right? Uh, Spud. Yeah. Spud. Yeah. Let, play so, on let, let me let me yeah. let me read these. Let me yeah. read these. Uh, uh, th- this story to you with we gotta do proper things. It's guys. emotional. We're being a little bit irresponsible as Americans. Yeah. yeah. PETA appeals to First Lady Jill Biden advocating for the replacement of chicken eggs with potatoes at the traditional Easter egg <laughs> roll, stating instead of promoting the the, the, the what is it, the Leterius uh, factory farming and slaughter industries, will you please initiate the annual White House potato roll? And a letter to the first lady PETA, mm-hmm. President Ingrid. Newkirk emphasizes the inclusivity and ethical consideration of a potato roll, stating potatoes are the most popular vegetable in the country and can be safely dyed, allowing for spectacular, spectacular traditional mm-hmm. activities such as rolling them, seeking for them, and decorating them. PETA asserts that the proposed change promotes kindness to animals and supports local farmers. I mean, if you if you're hearing me read this and you're getting agitated yourself, you know, uh, addressing concerns over an avian flu outbreak and rising egg prices, noting amid the worst avian flu outbreak in history, we're rooting for you to leave a legacy of kindness by stating this new Easter tradition. Can you show these pictures? So here's what we did, folks. I just want you to know this. We're so committed to following guidelines with PETA because this, we, we have to be responsible citizens that our Kelly... Okay, who's on the neck and who, if you want to know what cameras, technology we use, you can always talk to Kelly and Arnold. Kelly! Look at this. So we we are following the guidelines. What was that? (laughs) Is that a joke? (laughs) You guys are funny. (laughs) (laughs) 
So this is the Easter. Oh my God! I'm look at little. Get, she got a bunny too. Yeah, it's so cute, right? Aw, let me is, see. Can I try one of these? Let me one. I got one for all of you. Thank look at you. this Kelly. one for you. Can you please uh, give the pink? Give the pink one to Tom. Oh my God, Tom, you get a pink. Tom, one. you get a pink one. You look like a purple guy, so I'm gonna give this one to you. So look we can play potato. Why can't we do this, Miss Biden? Yeah. Why can't we do the responsible mm -hmm. thing, yeah, Doctor Jill, and, and paint? Potatoes. Yeah. Instead of X. I, I mean, we got to do the responsible thing here. And Aww. I'm assuming uh, if I show this to my kids, I wonder what my kids are going to say. Aww. They're going to be very upset. But to do the responsible thing, I want to challenge everybody. Moving forward, no more eggs. Yeah. It's potatoes. And when you do eggs, well, this is great. now you do. Now I, now I don't have to do with all that lead based paint I have in my garage. I'm going to paint the potatoes yeah. here so that they're safe for children. And by the way, Kelly said it was so hard to paint the potatoes. I can imagine. She stayed up to like three o'clock in the morning doing yeah. this. I can't but, believe she actually did so this. This is. Uh, I actually have a story about PETA. Go ahead, Tom. It, it, was, it was terrible. So I, um, so I go to PETA and I got my PETA t shirt. And I brought my friend who is a VP of marketing from Sweet Baby Ray's, right? And, you know, they, they make all kinds of barbecue sauce. I love Because I thought PETA was people eat tasty animals. And oh, I brought my no. friend from Sweet Baby oh, Ray's. Wow. We were there. No. Mm -hmm. They were so upset they kicked us what out. A, oh. By the way, for, to me and Vinny, uh, maybe for me because Vinny was born here. Whenever I see pita, all I want is lebni. Br exactly. Because I want to put lebni on pita <laughs> bread. bread. Because together it's like so. Oh. So so to me, when I when everybody would talk about pita, I'm like I totally support pita because uh, you know the pita bread is like the greatest bread in the world. Oh, if you so, put kebab meat until and you pull it off that's the right. kebab steak. Oh, and then with God. some colored potatoes oh. to go with it, bro. You're like. Dude, I'm hungry. Roll it. <laughs> Shout out to Rafi's place. Maybe, we should, get, maybe we should make I, some shirts. PETA. People eat tasty animals. Brought to you by Sweet Baby Ritz. There you go, buddy. Well, the right as, sauce, as you, anything's great. Yeah, right. Uh, sauce. Uh, right. You know, sauce, I, anything is great. As you're, uh, as you're reading this article, I, I didn't even read the article. I'm just waiting for it. I'm like, I'm waiting for a DEI thing, a word. And then there it was. Uh, the PETA president emphasizes inclusivity with inclusivity. eggs, bro. Like, how far down the rabbit hole are they going to go here with these, these pedophiles right there? Yeah. So, you know, I, you, you did the whole Christmas extravaganza. It was all gay, black, trans people in the White House. It was pretty interesting. Oh, it was you know, nuts. My biggest issue with the Democratic Party is that the, if you're a straight white guy at this point, like, you're excommunicated from the Democratic Party. Yeah, you're not This is not what it was under Clinton. This was, you know, it, thanks Obama. Thanks Biden. This is what's happening. So it's just like, I, I can't condone this. Let the kids eat their eggs. This, next thing you know, they're going to having, instead of uh, Thanksgiving, instead of having turkey, they're going to have tofu. Oh, you know? no. Tofu it's a, oh. It's a St. Uh, Patty's Day this week. Instead of having Guinness, they're going to be like, penis coladas, everybody. <laughs> So instead of I, I'm just offended because when it comes to this, I am very DEI. Beef, pork, venison, veal, any of them. I do not discriminate. <laughs> nice. Tom is pro meat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, by go. the way, I, I actually think Tom is trying to make a run at it. He's uh, he wants to prove he's the second best comedian on this on this podcast okay. behind you. Okay. So he's, he's, uh, and I, I like what he's doing. He's, very, he's been very, nice. very he's competitive. He's my ghostwriter, but I'm not yeah. going to give him classified. He's there my ghostwriter. Yeah. I, I, shame I, to see with DEI, uh, we're lowering our standards out here. So here we go. Here we now. go. Larry Ellison and Elon Musk teaming up to buy. No, not this one. Where's the story that I wanted to talk about with uh, Trump and Elon? There it is. Trump asked Elon Musk if he wanted to buy Truth Social. Hmm. Oh, Interesting. Wow. Let's see if there's any credibility behind the story. Uh, the overture, and this is a WAPO story, the overture to Musk, whose business empire includes SpaceX, Tesla, and X, did not lead to a deal, but the conversation, which has not been previously reported, shows the two men have communicated more than was known. The two have had other conversations to Trump advisors say about politics and business. Amongst their conversations was a meeting earlier this month in Palm Beach where Trump met with Musk with a few high-powered Republican donors. The people said the subject of the discussion is not clear, but after it was reported by New York Times, which noted that the meeting happened while Trump was looking for campaign contributions, the billionaire wrote on X that he is not donating money to either candidate for U.S. president. Musk, the world's sick and richest man, has increasingly voiced support for conservative ideology on X, including echoing Trump's unverified claims that the Biden administration 
uh, is, as uh, Musk wrote last week, importing voters and creating national security threat from unvetted illegal immigrants. What do you mean unverified, bro? Like, you have to be a dummy to think that the American people are dumb to think 10 million people are coming here. Then the next week, AOC says, we don't have a immigration problem. We have a documentation problem. <laughs> you think the American people are naive? Either accept it as a victory, Democrats, good for you, or don't play on words that the unverified claims. The numbers are very clear. So do you actually think that conversation took place, Tom, where Trump is asking Elon uh, if he's interested in buying Truth Social, do I think the convers- Do I think they had a conversation about it? Sure, but you know, two business guys of their level, what they would talk about a lot of things. It says, "Hey, you know, what about this? What about that? Hey, would you ever be interested in Truth? You know, would you? Because remember, Trump was raising investment like any other, you know." It- startup. It was a startup at one time, but it was a big startup, needed big investment. Would Trump talk to Elon about that? Many things they talk about? I think so. But it was like a clandestine thing. Oh my gosh, I'm upset. My, my company's in trouble. Would you buy it from me? Hell no. I don't think that conversation took place. Vinny? Um, I, I don't know, dude. I, I wish I was there, but you saw the interview with uh, uh, Elon said, uh, who was Elon interviewing? Oh, with uh, Don Lamon. He said, what did you talk about? He goes, well, not really none of your business. At a but single he, moment he, where they ran into each other at breakfast, to be yeah, specific. Yeah, by the way, yeah, it was breakfast. And you know what he said? He did the most of the talking. It's Donald Trump, bro. He's the he's the alpha in the room. He's probably talking. He's pitching. He's doing his thing. But, yeah, I mean, didn't we talk about um, who, who was interested in buying TikTok as well? Didn't we say some, something yesterday? Rumble. Rumble was, they said something about Rumble, and then Rumble stock started going up. I mean, I think, I don't know, but God, God, who knows what the hell they were talking about. This might have been something really, really fast, but... Mm-hmm. I don't see well, nothing into it. Look, with truth, spo- truth social, you know, speaking of echo chambers, I've never been on there. I don't, I mean, I don't, it's not anything. I don't think most people have been on there, but I do know. Uh, who wrote let's this just article. ask that question. Yeah. Has anybody here been on truth? I, social? I'm not a truth social guy. Right, Rob, can you run a poll to see who is right. on truth social? I mean, you'd be primed right. to be on truth social. I mean, the uh, fact that you're not on there is very, no, dude, that's, it's, I, it just, it tells a sign like nobody's going on. I'm on, there. So I'm I, on the next guy. It's just, I it, registered it, and I checked it out, but I have not been back. Yeah. I would I would venture to guess it's just an echo chamber of Trump well, loyalists. Maybe, at, maybe ask the question: Are you on Truth Social, active daily, registered, never used, never registered? Mm-hmm. Put those three. That's what I would want to know. Yeah, yeah, I, I would want to know that. I don't know how much credibility is behind this yeah. article. That's a great poll to do, but you know we know who owns the Washington Post. That's Jeff Bezos. Who's Jeff Bezos' biggest competitor? Elon Musk. They're jockeying for position of richest man in the world. I don't know. I mean, what is... And space. Wh- 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 you probably followed... Are you on True Social? I'm not. You're not. Okay. So, I mean, look, you have multiple guys in this room that are in the social media world that, you know, are in the Trump orbit. You're not even on True Social. That should tell I, you something. I try to get on yeah. True Social and at the beginning... Because to save the name, I think the team said, let's save the name Patrick mm-hmm. Bay David. So, you know, because we then so Patrick Bay David 1, Patrick Bay David 2. Yeah. And then we had complications, so we never followed up. Yeah. By the way. At that time. I'm, wh- I'm actually curious with the poll. What's it called when you tweet something on X? It's a tweet. What is it called on truth? Like a truth, truth bomb? Is this a truthy? Truth. I don't know. Interesting. That's a very good question. Uh, is this company making money? Is it I've not making used money? It. 67%. Yeah, even our audience out here has not used True Social back for the most part. Interesting. I've never used it. Have an account. Don't use it. Use it daily. Five yeah, percent use in daily. Sixteen. It's like it's like le- legitimately big time hardcore. Yeah. Like MAGA people are on there to hear what Trump has to say. Would you say it's like the Twitter? It's the Rumble for Twitter. I would say it's a way more of an echo chamber than Rumble because at least according to Chris, our friend Chris, is that there's sort of. I a, think they wanted uh, to be uh, at the time. I right. think that was the strategy. I think or it's the parlor, parlor. that made it. Exactly. Yeah, That's, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's the, you're right. I guess, I, I'm not even being facetious. Did they make it? Is this company making money? Is it doing well? Are they going to sell for a profit? Is I it mean, a loss? I genuinely don't know. What? So can you, I think something just happened recently with Truth Social. Can you tap in Truth Social Valuation? Truth Social Market Cap. Maybe put Truth Social Market Cap. Uh, if you type in, oh, okay, mm-hmm. right there. Let's see. What, do we got what does here? it say? Zoom in. February one hundred socialist given is going to to merge to merge media company technology with blanket check acquisition vehicle. The currently values the parent of a social media app, Truth Social, as much as ten billion. That's a lot, bro. For f- and no, and the majority of people aren't even really using it. There's well, no can way you type in Truth work. Social Stop. revenue? Revenue. Type in Truth Social revenue twenty twenty three. So for some of the uh, truth social generated, just get out of here. Doing a quarter. Yeah. Doing a quarter in Guys, that's like million. four million yeah. a year. 
Yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's so Manek is bigger than Truth Social. I know. And, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Manek is bigger than Truth Social. And by the way, this, this, that this, doesn't even pay. I would be willing. I know what servers cost. That probably doesn't pay, Pat, wow. for two weeks of servers. Scroll down a little bit. Pat, Trump's you, you know, social I was not expecting say, that. You know Rob, what Amazon down. server costs, Thirty-one Pat, million dollar net time? loss. That's I don't year. think this company's making money, bro. If you're telling me, there you go. If you're, t- uh, yeah, reports thirty-one million dollar net loss since uh, wow. launch in mid twenty twenty-three. They're saying it's worth what ten billion dollars. Look, if you're telling me and you're looking me in my face and you're like, Elon Musk bought. Twitter for forty billion dollars. What was the exact 46, number? Forty six, I think. Okay, forty two, forty four, whatever it is. Yeah. You're telling me that True Social is a quarter of the net worth market I, cap I of Twitter, and well, they say that Elon overpaid. I'll tell you, you're a bold faced liar. There's no way. This I, I believe for- that number because I can do the math in my head, and I believe their infrastructure costs is million dollars per two weeks. That mm-hmm. would be twenty six million bucks. Plus, they don't do a lot of marketing. I believe that number. Wow. Anyway. Well, I mean, you just saw Q. Was it Q3 or Q4 of a million three? <laughs> Is that even it? accurate? No, that would be accurate okay. because you're a SPAC. A SPAC, you got to yes. report numbers. And that okay. was what the first link was. Pat's right. That first so, link was about F- SEC. Right? Don't you have to report yes. if you're a SPAC? And the SEC. You're a publicly yes. traded company. February 14th, yeah. the SEC mm-hmm. was giving him a green wow. light on SPAC. How bad that. is that, Pat? million dollars in it's revenue? It's not about how Q3? bad is that. When it comes down to technology, software, apps, things like this, they, they you're not buying initially because of revenue. You're buying initially because of traffic and eyeballs going to it. Then you hire a Sheryl Sandberg to find a way to bring mm-hmm. rent revenue or Linda, uh, what's her name? Vacario. Vassarino. Linda Vacario. Vacario. Yeah. You bring people like that that know how to turn Yacarino. it into... Yacarino. 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 Yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, forgive us. We're not... Uh, so Yacarino, who was what? A former NBC... Uh, executive. Uh, whatever, yeah, exactly. executive. Yeah. yeah. So you bring somebody like that. But first you got to get traffic. So c- can you type in yeah, exactly. how many times Truth Social has been downloaded? Truth app. How many times has Truth Social app been downloaded. I'm curious. And while, and while he's looking, so do you think because Trump is basically the face uh, and the name of it, is he paying just to be able to speak? Do you know what I mean? Like he can go on X right now. What? Who's who's paying to keep this thing afloat just to have Donald Trump speak? You know what I mean? To- total is he paying for it? Truth social. <laughs> Trump truth loyalists who just want to hear what he has to say. Go look at the last, Pat. 2023 third quarter. Ugh. Yeah. Because think about it? it. Since Elon bought Twitter, some of the best follows are the conservative guys that have what they say. They're not on truth. They're on X. You should be able to find out how many times Truth Social has been downloaded. It's got 115,000 reviews on Apple. It's a lot of reviews. Uh, uh, but how many times has the app been downloaded? Does anybody know the number? I'm trying to see the number of how many times. Anyways, I, I don't know what the number is. You should be able to get it, though. To- truth Social app total downloads or uh, rob you can also while you're looking for go to their stock i'd like to see how they're doing it since they're a spec they're publicly traded i'd like to know where their stock is over the okay, last here we go there are about years. two million active truth social users today rob if you can pull that up what you just is this you send me or is that brandon i think it could be brandon that brandon sent it to us there's about two million active users rob if you can put that up truth social has about one million downloads in the first two weeks of its launch which includes 170,000 downloads on the first day. 12% of all U.S. Uh, social media users have used or visited the Truth Social platform. Just under 70% of current, tro- uh, yeah, huh, interesting on how many it is. So we'll see. Listen, it's not easy to get a business like this off the ground. It's not. He's got Devin Nunes as the CEO. Mm-hmm. And um, they launched two years ago, approximately 2 million active users, according to this website. Mm-hmm. Could be higher. 77% of Democrat voters said they, they'd never use the platform. Over 60% of women said they would never use the platform. Truth Social is now valued at $500 million. What is the date on this? This is February 13th, 2024. So this is a month ago. This is pretty recent. So they're not, so bad. If they're not making money, do you think Trump and them are just keeping it alive because he, there's so many people, there's millions that are well, listening just to him? What sucks about this is the following. When, when did uh, Truth Social launch? What's the date on Truth Social? 2022, maybe? Well, we just said this, right? And the yeah. date was what? February of 2022, right? Okay. okay. There is a big event that happened that year that hurt their momentum. When did Musk buy Twitter? Oh, great point. I don't remember. Similar right no, after no, that. No, no. Right he, after that. Dude, he bought it, I think, in October of 2022. Yeah, right after. When did Musk buy 
Twitter. Oh, man. Okay. I think it's uh, no, it was right. April, April of 20. Was, so, okay. There no, was. no, no. He bought it. Yeah. That's when he said, I'm going to buy 9.6%, but it. he bought it October of 2022. Mm-hmm. Okay. So think about it. Yeah. Remember that? You Let launch, that sink in. Yeah. You launch <laughs> X, uh, you launch Truth Social. Great timing. Yeah. yeah. America needed an alternative and Trump's going to be on there. I'm going to use it. Great. Two months later, Elon mm-hmm. announces he wants to buy 9.6% or give or take of a, what do you call it, Twitter. Yep. And then he buys 100, uh, makes an offer for 100%. Then mm-hmm. October, eight months later, X is back with Musk and people trust Musk. You know, horrible timing. Yeah, horrible you. timing is what it, yeah. it sucks for business. Here, Elon Rob, Musk scroll the market cap screwed Rob. Donald Trump. <laughs> Just know that. Look That's at this. Like, by the way, look at the stock price when it this launched is, versus where it is now. Go to basic in the this, last five this years, SPAC, three years. Digital World Acquisition Corp. Don't SPACs peg at 10? Anyway, the... Um, so look, it shot up when it came up there. It stayed up. And then look, right in 2020, literally right when Elon Musk bought Twitter, go to October. I guarantee you, yeah, right there. Boom, oh, plummeted. Wow. Literally, Pat, you called it. Once Elon Musk bought Twitter, Truth Social was doomed. That's, the, that's, the, that's, that's, that's called timing. And yeah. unfortunately, it happens. It happens to all of us. Public market cap, $1.5 right now. Public market cap is what? One point five billion. Correct, Rob. Scroll down today, one four six. Okay. Yep. So that but, but, but ten trillion it, dollar valuation. F- is FYI, like a it had a. It's at it's at thirty nine bucks today. Fifty two week highs. Fifty eight lowest twelve. It's not doing bad. It's climbing this this yeah, month. It's not doing now, bad. Now he's locked in the nomination. So there's some. And uh, and guess what? There. He has posted stuff on Instagram. So it's not like he's not posting stuff on Instagram. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if he is yet. To have tweeted. Have you looked to see if he has yet to have tweeted or not? Let me see here. I believe the last one that he tweeted was his mugshot. August 24, 2023, which got 1.8 million likes. Prior to that, the last time he tweeted was January 8, 2021, a day after January 7th. Wow. That's the last time he tweeted. They banned him? Did they ban him after that? Yeah, yeah, he got banned on everything. That's when that took place. And then the next time he did is this. But he hasn't done anything since then. And even when he posted that, guess what website he drove it to? Donald DonaldJTrump.com. He didn't drive it to Truth Social. He drove it to DonaldJTrump.com. Is that the shirt? Let me see that one. Mega. You have to get that Uh, signed, Adam. You have to get that signed. Your favorite shirt. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see see what's going on there. With uh, What I can tell you is the left is so scared of a Musk-Trump-Tucker unity. That is a very... Very scary thing for them. And you know who else I put in there that's kind of scary? A guy named Dana White. Hmm. Let me tell you. Listen, Dana White was the only man in America that could save Budweiser. The only man. Bud Light. Literally. Bud Bud Light, whatever it is. The only man in America that could have saved Anheuser-Busch. The only man that could have saved that organization. Only man. And the CEO was at the UFC fight again. He was sitting right next to you. You didn't even know it. Did you know Which that? Which guy was it? Brendan. The guy that had eight Bud Lights. Oh, that's him? Did he would go to the bar, come back with three Bud Lights? I'm oh, like, this guy fully believes I in the product. Know. I didn't even know. Yeah, he was like. Oh, okay. He was, you spoke to I, him. He's I know who he is. Yeah, good yeah. looking guy. With the jean, jean jacket? jacket? Jean jacket. Yeah. He's the CEO? He's the CEO of Anheuser-Busch. I thought he was like an actor. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not good looking, but he's a good looking. And was a Harvard grad, I believe, yeah. former CIA agent and a Marine. Hmm. Analyst. Oh, CIA damn. analyst. CIA yeah. analyst. So you know what that means, Tom? Which he has even, secrets. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, he is an actor because he was acting like he actually likes Bud Light. <laughs> so congratulations. No, Great, no, point. No, no. He's, Great point. But, but the point Brendan is, what seems, I'm saying you meet, is... You meet Brendan, he seems pretty how, Well, how about this, Tom? Uh, would you touch a Bud Light? Because you wouldn't for two years. <laughs> I, I, got a tough I have my there. answer, buddy. <laughs> Tom, who's not exactly as masculine as Tom. Dana White in the UFC. That video is the best video. That video Bud is Light. the best video. When I brought Bud Light in for <laughs> Halloween, when I wore that outfit, Tom you wouldn't even, threw up. You wouldn't threw even up. touch it, Tom. Yeah. So that, don't don't tell me that guy ain't acting. When Tom Ellsworth, the manliest guy I know, won't touch a Bud Light. Light. Okay, all right, so let's go to the next story. Majority of Americans are frustrated by excessive tipping. Gone too far. Okay, all right, let's see if there's some credibility here, which, by the way, I, I kind of agree in some of these some of these things. As a person who loves to tip, 
Let's go through it. So, hmm. majority of Americans frustrated by excessive tipping gone too far. The research by C- Coupon Bird surveyed 1,199 Americans about their own tipping habits before asking another 628 Americans about their views on tipping and wages for servers. Over three quarters of Americans surveyed believing tipping expectations have gone too far, citing the increasing presence of gratuity requests of, at self-service kiosks, convenience stores, and the like, despite uh, uh, nearly 8 in 10 Americans agreeing that self-service machines asking for tips is going too far. It's also something 47.3% have experienced. The survey said shockingly 39.7% uh, have been told up front that they would receive a worse tip if they didn't tip, worse ser- uh, would receive worse service if they didn't tip, mm-hmm. and 20% would have experienced a situation where tipping was compulsory. Tom, thoughts on this? Uh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So not too long ago, I did a case study on Toast, and Toast is one of the companies that makes those, um, uh, the kiosks that you go into like a, you know, you, you go into like right across the street, you know, the little chicken, yeah. chicken place across yeah. the street and they turn the thing around. You put your card in. You can do it like that. Guess what? So I run into a person from Toast and I asked about this and he said, what's really interesting, if the perception is all they did was ring up your order and they turn the thing around, consumers are like, what the hell you want? You want mm-hmm. you want two, three bucks because you turned the, the cash register around so I could pay you. And they feel like that's an imposition, that that's like entitlement. Consumers don't like it. However, it comes to your table, very convenient to use. People like the automated systems. So that is there. And also, I have a beef on this with Uber. Uber throws at you the five-star review and the tip option when you get in the car. Yeah. Would you like to leave a tip and a five-star review for them? It's that the driver hasn't gone anything yet, gone anywhere yet. We haven't even got to it. Adam, I'm sure you see it in Uber. It's right there. And so, Never take an Uber, Tom. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh, yeah. Keep going. Catch your time. Giggity. So I, I think most Americans don't like it. And when and this isn't about Toast or any of the retail systems or, or Square, which is now called something else. It's not about that. It's about how the restaurants are using it, and they're putting entitlement in your face. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that one. Like, they didn't do anything to deserve it. And by the way, because now they have those big iPad ones, and it flips, yeah. and they're just sitting there watching you. And I'm right. like, you didn't do anything. The guy that made the damn burritos all the way down there, who's getting this $2? It's maybe, an awkward Maybe they I, pull their tips. Well, look, in I college, know. I was a waiter. I was a, a, before Uber and all that, I was a food delivery guy for one of those food delivery companies. And I would rely on tips. And I would remember thinking, oh, this guy tipped me 10 bucks. That was amazing. This scumbag over here tipped me $2 yeah. piece of shit. I'm stealing his french fries next time. Yeah. You know? uh, now they smartened up and they sealed the bag out there. So that they're very delivery smart. Guys, they've got it on that. But there's nothing worse than going to like a Starbucks or what have you, or even the chicken shop across the street. Let's say you, you, know, you and I go for lunch, whatever. Let's say it's 40, 50 bucks, what have you. And then they turn the thing around, and then it's, there's like a Russian standoff. But they don't say, like, usually the guy, oh, okay, I'll give you a couple bucks. But they give you the 10, 15, 25% thing. And all of a sudden, to guys, because I got a couple quesadillas, I got and to tip stare you. stare at you. Yeah, they stare at you, and I got to pay you $8, $12 uh, as a tip. Yeah, I had a couple bucks, but tip when appropriate. I'll, not give, when you, it's, I'll give you a couple things here on sure. how I feel about this. So, first of all, I love to tip. Uh, this last week, I was at Chops Restaurant. He knows who he is. And Boca, if you're listening to this, you're a freaking stud. He treats the family with class. He, Dylan, when he's picky, when he's ordering, he treats him so well. My kids love to go to Chops. They had a couple waitresses I didn't like because they were flat out annoying. And I would request, don't put them in my section. They have a handful that I freaking love. There's this one guy that used to do it, shorter guy, absolutely world class. He would help us out on the other side. But this guy that's on the other side that I like to sit, he's very good to us. A couple of the people from Luffs used to work at Babs. Wherever you are, used to work at Luffs. I love you, Babs. I miss you. I love you. We had some of the best conversations together. You know who you are. You're amazing. I miss going to Luffs. It's a whole different story. They had a bad experience. We had a bad experience, and we stepped away. Anyways, so I love to tip. I, I love to go out to dinner, and I like to take the check. I-, I like you to offer to pay, but I like to take the check. I like to take the bill. I just like doing that. Don't ask me why I enjoy doing that. Could be the fact that I'm Armenian, a Syrian from Iran. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Okay. However, if I go to like a, you know, Starbucks the other day and I'm getting a London fog, okay, and I put a $5 tip and it turns around and she sees a $5 tip 
and you don't say thank you, I'll never give you a tip. Huh. All I want is gratitude and thank you. Yep. If a person is tipping you and you don't say anything, done. I used to go to this uh, 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 Jersey Max. I don't know if it was Jersey Max or whatever it was. You would tip, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. would tip. Guess Jersey what? Mike's That's tip. awesome. You know what? I want to tip more. Every single time I tipped. So to some of you guys that are working in a place and a person tips, say thank you. It's very simple. It makes the customer want to do it more because we have felt that there is gratitude. Here's the other part. If I go to a place and they're asking to donate to a certain charity, every single time I do it, every single time, roll up this to this, can you add another $5? Every time I do it, I don't expect a thank you because I'm not doing it to them. I'm doing it for the charity. And it's like, hey, here's what I'm willing to support with this. No problem. Here's what I do here. Okay. Some of the places you go to, I think they should add the tip component to it if you offer it. Meaning, if let's just say I worked at a place that I know I'm going to entertain the hell out of you. I'm going to show you a good time, and you're going to feel a ton of gratitude. I'd like to get a tip for it, okay? So I'll put it on. How you doing, Johnny? Good seeing everything good? Yes, would you like to add a tip? Absolutely, I'd like to add a tip. The other day I went to a haircut place. I wish I knew the name to give these guys a shout-out because I'm, I'm chance of me going back there's not going to be high because I go to Drew all the time. It was a shop? Uh, it was a barber shop? It was top? a place in La Sola. Sam, if you're on, uh, Sam, ah, oh, shit, I... Anyways, it was this place I went to, and I got a barber, and these guys were Honduras. They were from Honduras. They were from Ecuador. They were from Puerto Rico. They were Cuban. I had the most incredible experience, and at the end, the haircut was like 35 bucks. I tipped the guy 60 bucks or 70 bucks. Amazing. Should have seen the look on his face. I'm like, dude, I just did it because you guys entertained me. Yeah. For 45 minutes, they're talking to me. How you doing with this? Tell me about this, tell me that. And, then, you know, that's part of the service and the experience. If you say thank you, if you show gratitude, if you give that experience, people are going to want to do it more. If you're entitled, if you don't even pay attention to it, if you're not even saying thank you to it, people are not going to do it no more. So a culture of a place that you work at, and it's not even Starbucks, the big brand. It's the people that work at that Starbucks. Some places you go to Starbucks or a different place, they treat you royally. Some people are like, yeah, next, what would you like? Oh, okay, great. But I'm like, you know what? Go join your DI community and make those people <laughs> happy. Meanwhile, you ain't getting no tips from this guy. So tips is based on how you treat me. Now, I saw a troll post a tweet I really like. Rob, let's put this up. Bro. I just freaking, you guys have no idea how much stuff like this makes me laugh, and I enjoy it. And it is it a does, troll. It doesn't bother me an ounce, and I want to show it to let you know I support trolls. Look at this. A guy just posted this right now. He put Back Bud Light, Will Bill Mulvaney with Chris <laughs> Cuomo. <about. laughs> you got to give Corporate him needs you to Let me read what it says. I haven't even read it yet. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same. That is hilarious. By the way, that's so funny. absolutely funny. He took Keep time bringing to do that. that. Took time. And I'm looking at the comment section with people being upset about signing Cuomo and us not doing a poll. Can you run a poll, Rob? Are you happy about Cuomo joining <laughs> value Can I guess it? I, I actually want to know what people... Can I say. guess the number? I'll actually write it down. Write right. it down and let's see because it, this is where the trolls get to answers, the haters get to answers, the bystanders get yes, to answers, no, the PBD matter. podcast no, no. get to answers, and, and let's see how the market reacts. I'm okay with it. Go ahead and uh, 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 put it in there, Rob, and tell us how it goes in about a couple minutes. And by the way, uh, Brandon just sent me a text right now telling me what the account is for the number of people that have downloaded Truth Social. And the number is, number is 4.3 million downloads. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> you know why that's kind of weird? Huh. Hey, Brandon, you're so funny. Okay. The website shows <laughs> this is a little too funny. What? Brandon, you're going to get credit for this, but this is hilarious. The website only has 4.3 million downloads, but the president has 6.68 .6 million followers. Shut up. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes that's sense. That's weird. Inflated. That is so. That's how weird. much people love Trump. Great. And, okay. Guess what the number is? I'm okay with that, guys. I'm okay, okay with that. And let's see if it's going to be more towards yes. And let's see if it's not going to work I out. Did 80, I did 80-20. You thought 80-20. It's not 80-20. It's the trolls are always louder than the other people who trust what we stand for. And they trust the fact that we're always going to call our BS mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. And we're going to be fair. And guess what? I am totally okay with this, and I'm totally comfortable with this, and I appreciate you guys being authentic. Keep challenging. Keep doing your thing. Keep doing your memes. I love it. I'm entertained by it. We love you guys. The Those who are coming here because another place sent you to us, we love you as well. Welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. And to the people that are loyal with us on a weekly basis, we love you as well.
Go ahead. Were you going to no, say something? Yeah, I mean, look, we've spent time with Cuomo, and you know, Mo. Uh, Mo. I call him Mo now. And look, you know, Pat, you've said this before. I, I like to work with and hire people that I just would have kicked it with in the army. You've said this a million times. Yes. Cuomo's a good dude, man. I said this in the podcast. Like, he's he's just a man's man. He's. I sat next to him for four hours at the UFC, fight, talking about fighting, talking about chicks. Like, yeah. when the chicks were fighting, he's like, yeah, yeah, let's get a load of this thing right here. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, it was funny. He was like, it was, yeah. it was an interesting guy. But what we need more of are conversations and dialogue and even debate with people that you're not necessarily aligned with. That's where you find the truth. There I say true social right there. And I think that's what Cuomo is going to bring to the table. I'm sure we're going to have conversations. We're going to disagree. see. It's we're going good. to see. We're going yeah. to see. We're going to see. The market's going to decide. And we're going to see what it's going to look like. I appreciate you for speaking on my behalf, but we're going to see <laughs> just, on what's going to... I was speaking about Cuomo. I, I know, I know okay. you were speaking about Cuomo, but uh, we're going to see what he's going to do. Yeah. We're going to see what he's going to do when he comes. And, and uh, you know, the, 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 the verdict is still out there. And I'm always from the mm -hmm. part of... I, I don't know. We'll see. I have a lot of guys that I've done business with right at the beginning. I feel like these guys can absolutely crush it and a partnership can be great. And then, you know, it works out, doesn't work out. We will see. The market will decide and we'll decide. But as of right now, mm -hmm. I have a good feeling about it because I want more debate and exchange of ideas. But I agree with you that hanging out with them, we're, we're trying to put up the flag. You know who's the first guy that's getting out Kim, to put up Chris, the flag and get on on top of the truck and like Chris, getting dirty? Chris, I was like, what? He jumped Good up for you. It. That's mm -hmm. that's my kind of guy, man. I if if only people knew what kind of people I befriend over the years, I get along with everybody and anybody. Just don't play games, don't manipulate. We'll call out. We'll Be do real. that stuff, that's and then it. it's gonna work out. All right, let's. Do, can we do one more story? Yeah, and which let's one? do one more story. Let's do Candace Owens. Okay. Okay. Are you this ready one? for this one? Oh my god, that's the one I'm going oh, to because god. I know you and her. You guys became best friends after I, UFC. I spoke with her longer than anybody I've ever oh, talked to in my I, life. <laughs> I'm listening to these guys. First of all, Candace has got a sense of humor. And she's she's funny. And I'm yes. sitting next to Vinny because I I sat. Uh, 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 You're behind uh, Trump. You're yeah. No. No. I, yeah. So it was. It was. You're here. Sage is this side, Candace is over here, and you're hearing, you know, Vinny and Candace. And it's like, hey, how do you feel about uh, these two guys? They've been on top of each other for over a minute. They look like they're enjoying it. Are you okay with that? And literally, they're doing commentary. The whole it's a sport. And yeah. I said, I would, I would entertain watching you guys react to a UFC fight. 100%. It would be funny as hell. But while we're there, she's saying all this other stuff. And she said, Candace Owens... This is a story. Claims French uh, First Lady Brigitte Macron is a man. What? Listen. Candace Owens has uh, her tweet right wagered now? her career that French President Emmanuel Macron's wife was born a man. <gasps> it goes that French Lady Brigitte Macron, 70, was actually born Jean-Michel Trogneau before eventually transitioning at the age of 30. It further states that she did not give birth to any of her three children hmm. and that her first husband, 69 years old, retired banker, said to have died a recluse in 2020, never existed. She went on to tell her followers why she thinks this theory has legs. The first obvious thing she said is the first lady is simply unable to produce any photos of herself throughout the first 30 years of her life. Guys, how easy to debunk, debunk this. Well, if you say, Candace, no, actually you've lived as a man for 30 years. I've lived 30 years. I'm going to show you every photo of every year that I've lived. That's wild. So she's well, fully going on there. Vinny, I'm going to let you take the thing. I just want to read uh, Candace's yeah. quote. This episode is blowing up. She just did a whole reaction. Yeah, to this. After looking to this, and this is actually huge, I'm willing to stake my entire professional reputation yeah. on the fact that Brigitte Macron is in fact... A man. I would bet, Adam. I'm that not, is okay. Like she's she's and, dying on this. Hill. Yeah. I, by the way, and interesting. I, and, by the way, and trust me, guys. I sat there and spoke with her in the by the way in the green room. Me and her are so locked in. Ivanka Trump comes and talks to her, and she goes, "Hi, Ivanka." Anyway, back to this guy. Yeah. Like she was honed in, Rob. I just sent you a link that you could post for everybody to do the research because this is what Candace posted. But guys, let's break this down. So they're saying she was born Jean Michel Tourneau, right? Um. Uh, the, the source of this information on Bridget Macron's past life was in articles published in September in the journal Fait des Documents, citing the extensive evidence about this cover-up, right? Um, so the French social—okay, so the journalist who reported uh, is Natasha 
uh, Ray, who was the author, she said that she had firm evidence that she was born Jean-Michel Trogno, a transgender, all right? And she's been uh, researching the shady past uh, that she disappearance of her alleged brother. Now, th this is the weird part. Jean-Michel Trano was last spotted uh, with the highly controversial Joseph Doucet, who is a gay Baptist pastor, since found murdered, mind you, in the late 80s of the previous century, around the time when Brigitte appeared, says Ray. The pastor was the first advocate of gay marriages and trans surgery and head of a pedophile ring. And the plot thickens, all right? Many suspect that Doucet had played a role that was similar to Jeffrey Epstein blackmailing those in power. But, and Pat, let's, and again, Kansas nails it on the head. How about take a blood test? But, right, but, but what's, a, what's a chromosome? XY, Tom, or XX? That's yep. all you got to do to shut everybody up. Correct. She's suing people. Like, or I, produce I, pictures before yeah, and, your 30th and, birthday. And, and again, bro, this is like the, the or zero. Or pictures of being pregnant. That, again, and this goes to the or Michelle Obama thing. Tom, let him speak. Yeah, no, but, but, yeah, I love yeah. you. Thank you. And then you go back to the old Michelle thing. Just show all the right. photos. Prove everybody wrong, okay? But here's, here's even in depth that you guys didn't talk about. Emmanuel Marcon, Macron is 46. His wife is 70. That's a 24-year difference, okay? When he was 15 years old in drama school, that's when he met uh, his, his she now— She was his teacher, His I teacher believe. at 15, and she said that they fell in love because she loved his depth of poetry. Like what? You, you like boys because they rhyme? Like, nobody's talking about the fact that that's when they met, and these three kids, uh, Candace uh, pointed out too— he fathered those three kids. And that, that big banker that you're talking about, nobody could find him. And then they said the daughter came out and was like, oh, he's dead. But the, we don't, the bear, everything is secret because you guys have to mind our privacy. But like I said, just prove everybody wrong. Grab your brother, put him next to you. And guys, you're all wrong to hell with all you. But now you're going after the reporters who are going in that path. Look at this. Uh, 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 Rob, can you show this? Are you showing this? This is the brother... And that is her <laughs> lined up. The brother that they said is not that the brother is not in the picture anymore. By the way, this is the only, this is the one part that was very weird. Can you go up and Google her name? Can you Google her name? Go Google her Bridget name. Is your Macron? Yeah, if you can just Google her name and go to her Wikipedia. Okay, go to her Wikipedia and go to her first husband. Uh, go all the way down you know, to the right. Spouses. You see, she has two spouses. Yeah. Go to Andre Luis whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, go and put him <laughs> up there, and I'll try to find a picture of him. Go to images. Oh, what? Only one picture, the black and white. Huh. Go, go, that's him. There are no other pictures of him. That's so strange. It's so bizarre. And I'm telling you guys. It's a little weird, Tom. And so the link that she, the, the link that she gave me, once I opened it on my phone, Pat, the, the phone went crazy because whoever did all that research, I'm pretty sure it's Natasha, it's so in-depth. But at the end of the day, it's very, very thorough. At the end of the day, prove everybody wrong because there's a photo. Uh, Robbie, there's a photo of the whole family. Uh, I might have said, it, I think it's in here. It's the photo of the whole family, and they're basically claiming that the girl in the lap of the mother is her, but it's not. It's the brother. Yeah, bro, look, look, at the, look, at, look at this document. You mean to tell me they didn't go in? <laughs> who did this? Who wrote this? So I'm, I'm, if he could even get to the top. Rob, who authored this? Do they even say who it is? Dude, this thing is long. It's long. And did they respond at all? Have they responded? Well, she sued, so she went after, she's, she sued, uh, two, well, she's suing for defamation and something else. But apparently Natasha Ray, they went to her, the French police grabbed her, fined her. But it's like, hey, guys, all you have to do, let's stop all this, all this Candace, all this everybody. Hey, guys, the, my brother, that's him right there. Show his face or take a, pr a prick of blood, take a little piece of blood. That's that's male blood or that's female blood. 23 and me will do it for you. Just prove it. Like, what, what, what's all this? Why are you leaving it up to, to chance? You know what right. I mean? Like Michelle Obama, when everybody's like, you don't have any pictures of you pregnant, on the, uh, but she doesn't. Just show one. Shut everybody up. But then the other side's like, they don't have to do anything. Like when Obama, when they're like, show us your birth certificate. Would it take three years? Just show it. You have it. Show it. Am I losing my mind? No. Well, I, am the, I the only one? Is this thing on? The famous like, Obama quote. Wrong. Go the, back. the non denial Rob, from I Obama. Rob. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah, am I right taking here. crazy? Rob, go back to that. Too. The well, hell is well, wrong here's what I find interesting about this. Yeah. Uh, like, why, out of any issue in the world, 
Candace is is so invested in this that she's literally, per her words, willing to stake her entire professional reputation on the fact because that Emmanuel Bergeron is a man. Hold we on. talked about it. Any journalist or publication that is trying to dismiss this plausibility is immediately identifiable as establishment. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The implications here are terrifying. I do not intend to let this story and calling of the other journalists to look into this expo explosive story and report accordingly. I'm not to let up on the story. So it's interesting of all the things in the world, yeah. this is where she's at right here. But I don't know. When's the last time we even mentioned Emmanuel Macron's name on this podcast? I don't even know if he's the president he of France still. Is he? Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, he's part of the that, that whole community that's sort of the never Trumper of the, the NATO community. I, anyway, call, I called you we'll see what about right a week here. ago. Yeah. It's, but no, and you know what it is? Failed, though. She, she just Here's what I'm most upset with. Uh, they understand. If you're a man and you're a leader and you have options like this, you're going to pick a lady 25 years older than you, buddy? Why, why would you? I go? don't know. Adam, that's, that's a weird. So that's what I'm most upset about here. Well, that's what Candace is pissed off about. Nobody's talking about the fact that you met him when he was 15. Very weird. That's when it started. Okay. That's called pedophilia, yeah. number one. And number two, she's tired of the gaslighting because she feels as if they put them into power, Adam, because they got dirt on them on some Epstein shit. It's like, listen, put them into power, do what we want, say what, say exactly what we want to do, do the narrative, do all these decisions, mm -hmm. because they got them. Because guess what? Wow. If they expose him, and by the way, there's photos of him with Justin Trudeau. If this is true at all, and he's into men, there is photos, and Robbie, you can find them. He kisses Justin Trudeau. Yes, Adam, I do kiss Tom once in a while. While in this nature, but that's because I love him. But this relationship, where's the one, Rob? Where they're like, oh, Rob, oh. up, where they're kind of close and we're like uh, to the left of that. Up, up, no, no, up <laughs> to the right, 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 that one right there. Who touches you? When's the last time you touched another man's head like that, yeah, Adam? This is what they do in France. Is, you know, no, they, you, have, you, never see, you never seen grown men, you know, kiss each other in cheek. I don't know. Uh, dude, dude, I don't know, Vinny. That, there, there's pictures like, of Trump and Trudeau. There's pictures I, of Trump I, I and think, Macron. Make time? out with Tom there. Time? I don't know. Here's, what, here's my only question. We're covering this here in America I on the felt PBD podcast. So dirty. Why? What is the French media saying about this? Why is this? Oh, well, guess what? The people, why are the street are, about the people in the street are wearing a blonde wig and walking around because they know, Adam. Yeah. They're not stupid. But well, here's the thing. Why? So they, he, he, voted he responded. They he voted for him. He responded, yeah. denouncing the claims as fabricated scenarios. He just responded a couple days ago, by yeah. the way. And he says the worst thing is the false information and fabricated scenarios. People eventually believe them and disturb you, even in your intimacy. That's what he said. And then he emphatically denies the conspiracies and said it was a case of typical misogyny that women have to put up with nowadays. The baseless accusations that Bridget Macron is trans has been spread by voices opposed to her husband, including those on the political far right. right. Oh, weird. Okay. Benny. I don't know. Well, I don't then, know. You listen to that. Show me a you Show listen to that in the media, and this is translated from French, you know, and I'm trying to make up my mind whether that's just fallacious or cunning lingo. Just show us your, by the way, bring your brother to the camera and basically do this to everybody. Do that or show us your blood. Give us a little piece of your blood. Look, Vinny, I respect Give you. I respect drop. Candace. Of all the things that are going on in the world, this is not even the top 100 on my list. But Let them deal with this in France. I could give a shit. I, listen, I'm I, more offended that a, a leader of a man would marry a woman 25 years older. What, that's well, some weird well, shit. Well, what right? about Look, meeting somebody that's yeah 25 years older, meaning at the age of 15 or 16, uh, very or weird. whenever this relationship yeah. started? Going, going after politicians, whether it's real, like this very possibly is, or it's not, is sport. And Pat said it last year. It's going to be the year of investigations, and you could say investigations and accusations. It's come true. Whether it's real or not, it's just another one, right? I'm, I'm just attack, 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 attack. I, 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 but where's the, the policies and things that are going to help is, the people is, that are down in the, the economy? Rob, is this a people story? This is the people. Can you show up if this is people? This just it came is. out yesterday, by the way. Go, go. So that's People Magazine, okay? So go a little lower. And it go little, zoom in a little bit and go a little lower. They don't talk about the trans stuff at all in this article. But one of the things they talk about is the following right there. Emmanuel, who has become president since 2017, met Brigitte first when they, the non-president was in high school. In a November 23 interview, Paris match, translated the independent. Bridge shared how she never thought of entertaining a relationship with her student who was 15 at the time. 15. Hello. For me, <laughs> such a young boy was crippling. The two did not date right away. What do you mean what the do you two mean? did not date right away? What are you talking but about? But kept in touch <laughs> while Emmanuel was in college and later reunited. Now their marriage continues to get stronger. 
Emmanuel told CNN in 2017, yeah. love is part of my life and my balance. I do believe that you don't build something great and you don't uh, behave properly if you're not balanced and a strong couple. I've been with my wife for decades now. Have you? What? And she's part of me. So who is Manuel Macron? Anyway, just a very, she was a high school, she was a high school, a little bit weird. Very weird. I think weird. definitely weird. Or 16 years and, old. And by the way, apparently there's some people that are even saying she's not 70, she's 78. I heard another one of those too. And by the way, I'm offended, Tom. The next time I come and try to hug you and hold you, don't recoil like a snake and you're going to act weird in front of all the people. Like, show love, Tom. Yeah. I love you. I'll try. <laughs> Touch it, uh, Jamie Dimon says the Fed should hold off on rate cuts as its credibility is a little bit at stake. I think they have, be, ha, they have to be data dependent, he said. If I were them, I would wait. After all, they can always cut it quickly and dramatically, said Dimon, who dialed into the event remotely. Their credibility is a little bit at stake. I would even wait past June and let it all sort out, Dimon Caution is based on his view that even though the U.S. economy is kind of booming right now, there's still a risk in could enter a recession. The Fed has cut interest rates multiple times since March of 2022 to cool high infl inflation while trying to steer the economy into making what's known as a soft landing when the economy cools enough to bring inflation down without falling into recession. The U.S. economy appears resilient even after numerous rounds of interest rate hikes. Job growth remains robust and consumer spending is still strong. Tom, what is he saying here? Well, what Jimmy is saying is, will the Fed please stick to a plan so I can make money? That's what Jamie Dimon is saying. For the and I'll tell you why. His credibility problem was last year, all of the Fed estimates and the Fed's own statements, how many rate cuts would we expect this year? Up to six. Remember that? Now it comes back and it said, well, maybe four. And now we're sticking with three. The 60 Minutes interview that Jay Powell did, we're looking at three. No rate cut on the 19th and 20th coming up next week, but probably a 25, point, uh, 25 um, basis point, 0.25 uh, rate cut on April 30th, May 1st. So what Jamie Dimon is saying, the markets would like stability, stop changing the story, but they're not changing the story. The market has been reacting to data. And he said, he he, he gave him credit for being data driven, but Jamie Dimon is, uh, he wants stable markets because that's how the banks make money. And, you know, it was six and it was four, then it was three, but it's because things have happened. And by the way, you know where inflation is in most recent report? Mm. 3.12. Yeah, it creeped up a little bit. It from, creeped up a little bit. Two, so, seven to three one. So now who sounds right? Powell sounds right with what he said on 60 Minutes and what we're about to hear next week on the 19th and 20th is going to be, listen, the economy's a little hot. I don't want inflation to creep up over the summer. So guess what? There's going to be no rate cut right now. Well, but if the indicators stay there, you'll pro we can consider it on May 1st. I think that's what's going on. And none of the banking industry likes it when it jumps around like this. And this is just Di Diamond, who is basically the secretary of state of the banking sector. He's mm -hmm. out there speaking to the U.N., which is the Fed. Adam. Well, look, regardless of whatever Jerome Powell does, here's one thing I can guarantee you. Jamie Dimon's going to make his money. That's going to happen, okay? So he'll figure it out. I mean, overall, I think Jerome Powell has done a great job. You know, whether we're at 2 7 or 3 1, um, there's still the, the average person feels the inflation. There's still a little bit of a COVID hangover. Today's the four year anniversary of the. Um, a revelation of COVID uh, when Donald Trump basically declared it a national security uh, situation. But uh, inflation it has cooled. Uh, I think during we, we, we did a story a couple of days ago where like the real CPI, the consumer price index, was actually much higher than what inflation shows. But I think overall, Jerome Powell has done a very good job. I think when we did this podcast last time we talked about him, I gave him an A minus. I think you, you also gave him a very high mark. Uh, I think he's a steady hand at leadership at the Fed, and uh, he's not beholden to anyone, it seems. And look, if you take a macro perspective, not Macron perspective, if you take a <laughs> macro perspective of what's going on in the economy, you have to admit the United States has rebounded arguably better than any major economy in the world. Now, are there, are there issues? Are there things? Are there concerns? But overall, there's a lot of things to like in America today. The economy is strong. Inflation is cooled. Stock market is all-time high. Uh, Bitcoin's at all-time high. 
you know, uh, wages are, are fairly high. Unemployment is fairly low. There's a lot to like in the economy. But if you're the average guy out there, I co- could totally understand why it's tough to get ahead and you're living paycheck to paycheck. But you want to know what? Since I even started covering financial stuff in 2015, 2016, two thirds of Americans have been struggling living to paycheck to paycheck since then. That's Obama. That's Trump. That's a Biden. That's just the reality in America. Most of the average person uh, there's only struggles. There's only one problem, though. Yep. There's only one problem with that. And, and even if we look at it from the Macron economy, you would see that, <laughs> that we are kind of transitioning uh, into a uh, different phase with inflation. And even though it was a minor uh, issue uh, a couple of years ago, uh, it may it may, uh, you know, evolve into a mature issue <laughs> later on as we're, as we're kind of you know, transitioning well, through you this know. entire uh, process. A lot of transitioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah well I mean, listen, you rest- played, you got, my you friend. Got, you know, as Tom kind of always up. says, you can find yeah. your own pal but, upstairs uh, in the attic banging on that cheerleader yeah. out No, out he hasn't been upstairs in a yeah. while. But by the way, Rob, can you pull up, uh, Brandon, I don't know if you're able to pull it up. Brandon did text it to us, the whole concept about the fact that what's going on with middle America and how much they're, uh, in America, they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Over the years, and Brandon, if you're watching this, if you can send that over, that is my biggest concern, okay? Brandon, I know you have the data. We talk about it all the time. You know the chart that shows how big the middle middle class was versus upper class versus, you know, yeah. income-wise and where we are today. If you can send it so uh, Rob can pull it up, you have it somewhere on your phone. That is by far the most important data for us to be looking at. Is that it? Yeah, so check that out. That's the concern. That is the biggest concern to me that I'm looking at. From 1971, lower income was 25%. Upper income was 14%. Middle class, middle income was 61%. 2021 is 29, 50, 21. By the way, I wonder what that is in 2024. I'm willing to bet in 2024, it's probably even a bigger number. Now, some may say, why are you upset about that? Isn't upper income going from 14 to 21? That should be a good thing. And middle went from 61 to 50. So we're graduating many the middle into the upper. Fine, if you want to make that argument, that is only the solid argument if the lower income decreased. But the lower income went from 25 to 29. So we can keep doing what we're doing with the current strategy that we have. It's going to make guys like me richer. Trust me. It favors guys like me all day long. But it's not a better economy. The more lower income increases, the more crime in America increases. The more lower income increases, the more entitlement increases. The more lower income increases, the more you're worried about when you're, hey, you know, they broke into my car. Well, what's the big deal? It's just breaking into the car. It's not like anybody got hurt where that lady is oh, talking God. about, right? So, yeah. But that, that is my concern. I hope they make the decisions a uh, little bit in a subtle way. And I kind of agree with Jamie Dimon, the fact that pump the brakes, don't do it yet. However, mm-hmm. here's the other part you got to be thinking about. Do you know what happens if they start lowering interest rates and delaying it and say they delay t- till June or July or August, till September, October? Do you know what's going to happen to the market? Huh. The Dow is going to get close to 50,000, okay? S&P is going to go, I don't know, 6 Dow. It's going to be a solid number. Where, where's S&P at right now, Rob? If you, Vinny, right off the top of your head, do you know where S&P is at right now? 4,500. Is it? I think you're actually probably right. 5150. <laughs> damn it. Okay. I can so 5150. I, I, I driving. The Dow is at almost 39 right now. I, uh, I, think, I think Dow is going to flirt with 45 to 50, mm-hmm. and I think S&P could flirt with 6 Dow. So the later they delay it, uh, increasing it, it's also a – a great news to share. That speech when you're debating, oh, I made the, the Bidenomics, great, all yeah. that stuff, it's going to be yeah. a very interesting. You hit the word that I just wanted to cover. I don't know if you said, uh, well. I, inclusivity? I, I hit yeah, that was right there. Inclusivity and grinder. Uh, <laughs> no, Bidenomics. Um, because, you know, if you, it, Pat, you're a data guy. I would love to see what that. Uh, what data Rob, guy? What? <laughs> you want him a data guy? What the <laughs> hell is going on here, Adam? If you can go back to that, to that thing. <laughs> Pat uh, dates a guy. What? I'd love to know where that no, the, the middle class right there, because it is true. The middle class is shrinking. And then if you want to just basically critique Bidenomics, you just look at the data. I'd love to know where it is in 2024 because, you know, Biden's whole Bidenomics is premised on the following. That he wants to build out the middle class. He wants to uh, build from the bottom up, not the top down. Basically, you saw that subtle little jab where he talked about uh, trickle down economics and Reagan. That's where he went with this. So I'd love to know what Bidenomics has done since 2021. Has the middle class actually grown? Has lower income actually gone up? And what's the situation with the upper class? But with all the money printing, 
you know, you always say money's going to flow up. So I'd love to see where that goes right there. Yeah, that's anyway. that's my concern. I, I, I the, the bigger the middle income mm-hmm. that we have, middle class that we have, the society is going to be safer, more calmer. Everybody's paying their bills, Mm -hmm. you know, managing their own dreams, their own lives, and we're good to go. And PBD, since you've uh, mentioned Brandon so many times on the podcast today, we got to get a shout out to Brandon. Let me see. Let's go, Adam. Oh, what a great shirt. What a fantastic shirt. People love that shirt. Let's go, Brandon. It's it's a very, uh, uh, do we have any stories that we haven't hit on? Tom, do you want to go to the one? Did you see that, Pat? In Wales? Another one of those monolith 10-foot silver things are just standing out in the middle of nowhere. What the hell? By the way, I don't know if we have a time for another story. Can I want to go to this one no. thing. Can we give a quick shout-out to Mayor on, Francis Suarez? That's I don't know if you're going, going to go right there. Now. That'd yeah. be great. So state ethics investigation into Miami Mayor Francis Suarez dismissed, Florida Commission says. Uh-oh. Okay, so let's go through this. And, Tom, I'm coming to you first. Uh, here we go. So uh, the ethics investigation to Miami's Mayor Suarez regarding whether he had accepted expensive tickets to high-profile uh, sporting events has been dismissed. The Florida Commission on Ethics dismissed the complaint filed during the summer of 2023 by activist Thomas Kennedy, stating that it would, had found no probable cause to his complaint. The complaint alleged that Suarez did not uh, file a gift disclosure for his F1 VIP access passes in 2022, as would be required if anyone other than the city or family member paid for it. Photos from May 2023 event showed Suarez wearing passes that granted access to the Paddock Club on May 5th through 7th. The complaint also stated that the same was true about his trip to Qatar for the World Cup, where he was pictured with soccer legend David Beckham. Beckham, meanwhile, is a registered lobbyist for his major league soccer stadium that will be built on city land. Tom, thoughts on this? So guess what? In the year of investigation, Suarez is what they hate in a in a big city, a successful conservative that's making a difference. And that's what his leadership as mayor has resulted. He's brought crypto down. He's brought venture capital down. He's brought jobs down. And this is was a petty, this was a political activist that was, I'm going to say it, in bed with the Miami Herald. And there was... Um, Two uh, reporters for the Miami Herald that were publishing these articles and they were looking for anything and they drew these two dots together. Both of them are kind of funny. Beckham, because Beckham has given certain amount of money to the city and because he's part of a group that may benefit from city land to build the new soccer stadium, you know, bringing a new stadium to Miami that loves soccer. Oh, what a terrible thing. Well, Beckham technically by law had to register as a lobbyist. It's just like in the insurance industry, you have to, you know, you did it, Pat, you had to register your license in each state by law for certain things if you're in a certain position. So the Miami Herald had this thing, you know, he was, he, that he was in Qatar with a lobbyist and they failed to mention that the lobbyist was actually David Beckham. Mm-hmm. They were stretching on this and, but what they got, they got the Florida commission to say, okay, hang on, hang on. Miami Herald stories here. We'll, we'll, the commission on ethics, we'll dig into it. So they spent a bunch of taxpayer money on this. They dug into it. They looked everywhere. There was also a thing where they were looking into his law firm because Suarez is a very successful lawyer and guess what they found? found Hmm. nothing and it was dismissed yesterday cbs news covered it here and so this is another example of just like things are have been dropped on Trump. They were trying to use things and trying to use an investigation to see if they could get one on a very strong Republican mayor in a blue city that the Democrats covet. They covet Miami. They hate the fact that Dade County has turned slightly more conservative. They hate the fact that uh, DeSantis carried Dade County, first Republican governor to do so since the since Christ descended or something. And it was amazing. And so this is This is basically vindication for a conservative leader who had a ticky tack thing that they tried to turn into an ethics investigation. So, you know, Mayor Suarez, thank you for your leadership. The critics are wrong again. You know, Alicante Suarez, gracias por su liderado. Los críticos están incorrectos otra vez. I don't even know. Someone want to fact check Tom right there. Tom, you just Uh, called me a a, a donkey guy. No, I think I thank Mayor Suarez for his leadership and said the critics are wrong in Spanish or I ordered a margarita. (laughs) I think it's the latter. You know what I love when Tom does that with Melva? Yeah. 
Melba afterwards says, I don't know why this gringo does that. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any clue what he's saying. She's like, but... he ordered food. Yeah. Well, But she uh, loves you, Tom. Go ahead. Look, Alex. I've known Mayor Suarez. I'm born and raised in Miami. I've known uh, Francis Suarez for a decade now. Um, you know, He was actually the first politician that I ever donated to his campaign. I think he's, his original he ran in 2016, I want to say. Uh, but I remember going to Wynwood and being a part of it. There was like a plaque of all the people that donated. And there I was. I took a picture of it right there. Here's what I can say about Francis Suarez. And I'll read his, his statement. At the end of the day, he's just a good dude. He's been a great mayor. And what is the most noticeable thing about Francis Suarez, he's just real. He's authentic. And, you know, that, that's the one thing you constantly hear is that politicians are fake and they're fabricated and they say one thing and then behind closed doors is doing anything. As far as I can tell, and I know PBD, you've spent a good amount of time with him as well. He's helped us out with yeah. that thing recently. He's just real. You say what you, you, you know, he, he, what, what you see is what you get. And um, he's been great. And I, I'll read his, um, <clears throat> his tweet. He said, today's bipartisan and unanimous exoneration provides an irrefutable, irrefutable proof that the vicious and politically motivated attacks on Mayor Francis Suarez's character are completely inaccurate and without merit. This malicious complaint was made by Democratic activists with no evidence besides inaccurate news stories published by the Miami Herald and represents a significant reprimand of their reporting. Instead of letting this political matter distract him, Mayor Suarez remains committed to the people of Miami, where his leadership has helped produce the lowest unemployment, lowest taxes, and lowest homicide rates in Miami history. So shout out to him. You know, he ran for president. He was the first, yeah. I think, candidate to drop yeah. out. And I think there's going to be a you always gotta love governorship him. in his future. I, I love a dude that doesn't play a dude disguised as another dude. Yeah, I like, love you gotta, that. You gotta respect the fact I that respect that a lot. Real. Kind of being himself. Yeah. I respect But no, I saw him the other day uh, pr prior to the fight. And if, if you're watching this, uh, uh, Francis, best best looking mayor in town, Stuck. and his hair yeah. is absolutely Not sick right now. <laughs> you know, if you look he at his he hair, had motivation by somebody. He said he had was. motivation behind somebody, but but his hair looks money, yeah. money. His hair looks so look good. Look at now. that dude. His, his hair looks uh, like a freaking. He did a new haircut. No, he's got a yeah. new do, and it looks inspired sick. by who though? People. I have no idea. His, his hair looks phenomenal. His hair looks phenomenal. He was at the UFC fight. He was at the UFC That's fight. That's great. Listen, he's, 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 he's a good, good dude. All right, uh, gang. Rob, we got podcast tomorrow. We're doing a Sunday service. Uh, Sunday service. We're doing a Sunday service with Andrew Schultz. Oh. We're doing a Sunday service with Andrew Schultz. And I think he's performing tomorrow night and Saturday night at the Hard Rock. Oh, nice. That's which, great. Which we may be going. But anyways, that's a different story. Yeah. Gang, do your thing. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Well, oh, I'm sorry. We got to do. Yeah. Holy moly. Look at him. Holy. Damn, yeah. Rob. That's the. Thinnest, I've, first of all, I don't know how many thousands of uh, uh, items were sold, record-breaking on people representing the Future Looks Bright uh, gear that we have. The pink hat sold out in no time, and for some of you guys that want to have it on pre-order, go to vtmerch.com and place the order for the pink hat because the, the, even the pre-orders are going to sell out when it comes out in the next couple months. So make sure if you want the pink hat for yourself or your wife, place the order. Go ahead, Rob. All right, so this is for two people. Each winner gets... Two tickets to the UFC. Oh my God! Three hundred. This is it. Las Vegas. Wow, it's a big deal, right? I yeah, know. this is a big deal. All right, we got the first one. Oh, sixteen, 16 seven, seven, four, four. 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 Pull up the name to see who it is. Yay! That is Eric Lems. Eric Lems, L E M S, is the first winner. Where is he based out of? Can you see the address or no? What, what state they're from? It doesn't tell me. Okay, what state. Eric, Eric Lems. Congratulations, congratulations. Eric. Eric's freaking out right now. Eric's like, what? Let's Eric, go don't to crash the your car, one. Eric. Let's yeah. go don't to the next one. Car. Oh. Here we go. Come on, PBD. Come on. Say Patrick with Come on. Place order. 18. No. I placed an order. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who is it? Rob. Watch it say. That is Nathaniel G. Uh, Nathaniel Gingrich. Nathaniel here. Yeah. Any relation to news? Wow, dude. Nathaniel Gingrich. Nathaniel. High chances. There's Very not high. a lot of Gingriches out there. Anyways, that's great. Both of you guys win two tickets. Uh, to the UFC 300 in Las Vegas, which is exciting. I think it's going to be right in the middle of us. Uh, uh, April It's going to be a big card as well. Uh, Rob, who should they email? Should they email you directly? We'll contact them. Justin Do we the have their information? Team. Yep, we have. Okay, fantastic. We'll reach out to you with your tickets. But congratulations to you. God Let's bless go. everybody. We'll do it again Sunday morning. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye. That's so cool for these.